morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the next live instalment of RGV Aerial Photography's deep dive into images that he captured on the ground this week at Starbase, Texas. We have Maurizio himself, Golden Boy, Grandpa Joe and Indian Star to guide us through all the latest updates, changes and theories from Starbase, Texas. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome back to our Starbase Photography Review. I hope everybody's doing well. Today we're going to go through photos that were taken yesterday at Starbase, Texas. And my name is Mauricio, otherwise known as RGV. I'll now be passing this along to Indy Star. Hi, everybody. Indian Star over here. I'll be asking your questions on your behalf to the gents to see what we can get some answers to. Until then, sit back, relax. Don't forget to donate. Don't forget to like. We hope you're enjoying your show. And I'll pass it over to GPJ, Grandpa Joe. Thanks, Mauricio and Indian Star. This is Grandpa Joe. And uh, welcome to another Week in Review. It's another exciting week. And Mauricio has gone out twice. And man, what another phenomenal set of photos. A lot of rain, but I think it almost made it better this time. And with that, we'll go over to our resident expert, Mr. Zach Golden. Oh, wow. Resident expert. Um, I don't know about that one, but thank you, uh, Grandpa Joe. Good to see everybody. Um, hope everybody's having a good fr uh, Saturday. Almost said Friday. The uh, days are kind of blending together a little bit. But uh, yeah, as uh, Grandpa Joe said, um, it was a little bit a little bit rainy out there. And I'm glad Mauricio was able to make it out. Sometimes you you think you may not, like there's no reason to go out there because it's super rainy and uh, you know, you might get some bad shots, but in my opinion, that's sometimes the best time to go out there when things are less active and, uh, you know, there's a lot less movement around. So it's easier to actually like get really good shots sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was really excited that Mauricio was able to go out there and get these shots for us. I don't know if you guys can see, I got my, a new background this week that Mauricio was able to capture. I, I'm not sure I could, where this is. I feel like it's probably on one of the container walls. Mauricio? Right. That's going to be right outside the launch site. There's a container wall right in front of the, what would it, right in front of Hopper. Yeah, we got to see them building that. And, you know, you would think that with all the rain and weather during the uh, this time of year for Boca Chica that they would uh, slow down. But, uh, no, they keep piling ahead. No, no stopping this train. Or rocket, as the case may be. <laughs> oh, we got right. an early early donation from Rocket Launches today. Donating <laughs> one euro, thank you. You know, Rocket Launches today is Hoppy, right? Yes. Thanks, Hoppy. <laughs> I do. Thank you, Hoppy. Do. He changes his name, and everywhere he goes, he has like six different names. People say I and have a lot whole of names. Pound. Thanks, Hoppy. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, and I see another comment that uh, I really like. Somebody talking about stage zero. Stage zero lovers, make some noise. Always love that. Uh, that's one thing hopefully Elon would be excited about as people carry more about, um, you know, what, it t what the, the facilities that are necessary to actually launch these vehicles instead of just the actual vehicles themselves. But, uh, you know, some people will probably hate on me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm glad you guys are here. We kind of wanted to give people a little time to hop in, but uh, I feel like we got a lot of pictures to go through. There's about 172 of them, and we really never make it to the end. So we might as well just hop right in and get going, huh? Absolutely. Like and, if, and if you miss anything, just uh, watch it again. <laughs> We're on replay. That's right. Man, okay. look, how, look how messy it was out there. Struggling a little bit with this new software. You know, sometimes you just can't beat the originals. Good old photos. Yeah, you know, I uh, this is this is all a result of the situation with the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody being very upset about the mouse pointer. So, you know, I I, I had to switch programs, and I, I used Microsoft Photos for probably uh, about two years. Sorry, I, I skipped over the beginning photo uh, for about like I don't know ten years, and then just switching over to a new software is uh is kind of kind of a uh, troubling a little bit especially when you're trying to do live streams and whatnot and figure it out at the same time so that's okay i do all of my photo editing in microsoft paint and, uh, <laughs> you just can't get a better program than that 
I, I, I agree, man. You, you, uh, you do some pretty good work in there. I think we're going to have some cool stuff to show that you put, uh, put together. I don't know if we'll show it during the stream. Maybe we'll just, Oh, we, we definitely it out later. should. I've, I'm real, we, that we one can, was real fast, but I'm real proud of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to it when we get there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Mauricio, did you? What were you thinking when you drove up, uh, seeing all this rain out there? Right. So first off, I mean, it looks gloomy and depressing. Just you know, but I want to explain that we're only going to be reviewing the photography due to weather delays. And um, honestly, I feel kind of. A little bit depressed just because I haven't flown like in we're going to about two weeks now that we haven't flown and it's just really difficult to for everything to align perfectly with our scheduled flight aircraft availability our pilot availability and then we have to just cross our fingers and hope that you know the weather cooperates and right now we've been booking flights left and right but we just we just can't fly. We can't fly. The weather does not allow us to. And this image shows pretty much, um, you know, what's been going on out there, you know, as far as weather wise. I purposely took this photo just to show you guys, you know, what it's <laughs> been like. And I've been out there this week. I went out there three times and it's just some days it works out, but then the aircraft's not available or either the pilot's not available and it's just too short notice to get up at a, at a moment's notice. Yeah, you know, definitely it, it wanna, stays. Go ahead. Definitely want to stay on the good side of the of the pilots. And uh, let me just say, your your tenacity and willingness to fly over and over again has really paid off. You've gotten, I'd say you've gotten lucky, but you've worked hard and you've gotten some great shots. Like whenever they were doing the full stack, you had to go up three times to get that one shot. But boy, it was totally worth it. So keep on flying and... Uh, Everybody, if you uh, if you want to donate through uh, YouTube or through Patreon, uh, all of your donations go towards uh, keeping Mauricio flying and keeping the content coming, and also driving down there. I mean, it's a forty minutes uh, trip each way, so uh, it really eats up some gas. And you keep him in boots because he oh, needs and, those muck yeah. boots or whatever. Did you did you end up getting those, Mauricio? No, I'm going shopping for those boots tomorrow. So I appreciate the boot fun <laughs> from two streams ago. And I'll probably just be going to Academy and choosing something out. And I don't I go for the white boots. Don't do the white boots that he keeps the, trying to get you to get. I, I've seen them. They look they look all right. Um, the reason I want oh, to go in person is just to try them on and make sure that they, you know, I'm, I feel comfortable in them. And I think that's something you can't really do when you shop online. When it comes to those, you know, 100%. Yeah, most people usually just buy three pairs of things and then they send it <laughs> back. I and mean, I don't recommend that because it's a pretty wasteful way of going about things. But, you know, it's kind of one of those things that just has to happen when you're shit buying online. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> is it really wasteful because you're employing the post people? <laughs> you're employing the Amazon uh, people? It's not sustainable. Ah. Yeah. How many times but, have uh, you buy three pairs of shoes? <laughs> you never know. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to comment on with the, with the rain like this, these are the days I think that SpaceX lives for. Like, the, these are the days where they're like, we got, we got two months, guys. Bring all the crazy stuff out while, while Mauricio's not able to, able to get in the air. You know what I mean? I think they probably got a bunch of R2s probably just sitting out there right in the open, uh, knowing that he's not going to be able to get up there and get, get a <laughs> shot of him. Probably all of the uh, crazy equipment that's showed up is just laying outside, too. I think we had tons of large equipment show up, especially for the wide bay this week. Both bridge cranes arrived. Um, I know the elevator's on site. They lifted two sets of stairs. And about two hours ago, they just stacked. Um, they started the fourth level of the wide bay as well, too. So hopefully, uh, I mean, they're moving quick. They, they, they got set back because of the weather as well, too. I mean, that you know, while it is good because they can put secret stuff out in the open, um, you know, it also stops them from, from doing heavy lifting. And, you know, if you're lifting these huge panels up onto this structure you're gonna definitely want the wind to be a lot like it is today instead of how it's been the last week so and you have another fan who loves stage zero mark ellums donated 10 pounds he loves the stream and he looks forward to it every weekend he really appreciates all of our efforts and he's traveling to boca chica next month from the uk how exciting is that nice Perfect awesome. timing. I think 
I think you might be in luck whenever you visit. Uh, maybe you'll see a full stack, uh, Mark. Dude, maybe and, you'll uh, see a suborbital orbital. I don't know. I'm in hoping. March. I'm hoping. Mm. Hey, big shout out to the uh, to the uh, British invasion. Um, <laughs> I know half of our staff are British, and uh, many of we we do this. Our team, uh, our team yeah. Uh, ha- ha- we do this stream at this time specifically so uh, that the European folks can uh, catch it right before they go to bed. So. Uh, yeah, thank y'all. We really appreciate y'all watching us. Yeah, you know, we're we put in a lot of effort for y'all. So thank you, Mark. And if you like our effort, go ahead and like the stream. Feel free to donate through Patreon or through YouTube. There's so many ways to help Mauricio out. And if Mauricio can fly, that means we get some amazing photos. All right. With that, let's uh, let's get into it, shall we? They go on in. And uh, once again, yeah, it's a rainy day. I'm I'm gonna power through these beginning images. Um, there's actually some cool stuff coming up right here. We now have both uh, booster test tanks chilling at the entrance. I, I think they're creating a shield around the uh, Sanchez site using uh, lawn ornaments. So. They're probably just going to line the entire facility with that. That would actually be really cool as a drive-by. Like if you, if one day they open this up and you just get to like cycle or uh, drive through here and drive past all the test tanks and the boosters and the starships that they're probably never going to fly um, or retired and don't feel like scrapping. Uh, this is actually a really cool area. I'm kind of interested to see the way it develops. It, I mean, yeah, you could definitely get a, a museum of starship development as you go through. Bird cage and all. I wonder if that's their their goal here, or if it's just you know they don't they they don't want to take the time to scrap these. I mean, when are you going to use the nose cone jail again? You know, uh, I think they're going to use the nose cone uh, bird cage jail to uh, test the next iteration of the uh, nose cone, which should be coming up with. Uh, we've already seen a few test articles. Uh, there was some suspicion that maybe uh, uh, Starship number 24 would be a uh, new smooth banana peel style nose cone. And if that's the case, it's enough of a change. They might want to test it in the Max Q cage. Uh, um, for those wondering, this uh, cage is used to simulate the uh, pressures on the ship at the maximum aerodynamic pressure while it's launching. So, or one thing I wanted to. Mention was, uh, you know, I'm seeing some of the questions in here. Number one, I wanted to address Jacqueline. Um, she asked when we're going to be able to have subtitles. I don't know if um, I feel like that should be pretty easy. I mean, we've done we've done a few Twitter spaces recently and their um, voice to text feature is really nice. I, I don't know if we're if we have that ability yet right here, but we will try and look into that for you, Jacqueline and anybody else who uh, has hearing issues. We'll, we'll definitely try and accommodate that. Uh, we're 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 still kind of new with this, so we're figuring out all the ins and outs. Um, but as soon as we figure out how to enable that, we will definitely do so. Um, and another thing that I wanted to point out, I see some questions about things related to the launch site. And while you guys know me, I'm super excited to talk about that. Um, we're gonna try and skip over any questions not related to what we're looking at, so that we can stay on topic and kind of actually move through all the pictures instead of skipping forward or. Uh, going on tangents and whatnot. So if you guys uh, just be a little patient with us, I know it's a little bit of a long stream, three hours, but I uh, promise you we'll get there. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll try and come back to your, your launch site questions as soon as we get to the launch site. So, oh man, this is amazing. This is, this is one of my favorite pictures that I've seen um, related to that just this sign in general i mean i've seen it people take pictures of it pretty much every single day but uh i don't know if it's just the rain or the lack of clouds that or the sorry the lack of sunlight that removes all the shadows or whatnot but this is an amazing picture um last week i actually reached out or you know mentioned in the stream actually that wasn't even last week i think that was wednesday just uh mm -hmm. you know seeing if anybody was willing to get out there and, and, and turn this into a logo. Um, and unfortunately we didn't really get too much, uh, feedback on that, but the good news is, um, we have a grandpa Joe and he basically took care of all of that for us. So I'm going to minimize this for a second, just so I can show you guys 
um, what Grandpa Joe made. <laughs> it's, amazing what you new, uh, with, uh, it's amazing what you can do with Microsoft Paint. That's amazing, man. I'm so I'm so excited you made this. This really made my day. I was been beginning to think that, you know, nobody was gonna come through with this, but we got ourselves a banner now. So thank you, Grandpa Joe. I appreciate that. Uh, and that's the last I'm gonna say about that because this is the RGV flyover review. But uh, I'm really excited and just want to let you guys know that the mission's been accomplished. Thank you, Grandpa Joe. I'm here and for thank you, Zach. Maurice, here for taking that picture. Yes, exactly, exactly. All right. You know, this banner up top just really is not too friendly with me. There we go. <laughs> so, Mauricio, I had a question. Uh, I noticed a little bit of an effect on this picture, and obviously it has to do with the rain. So what is what are you doing to compensate for the rain? Are you just increasing your exposure in order to make it so you're not seeing all the droplets? Um, you're going to see the droplets regardless. Um, since you're using a... Since I'm using a 600 millimeter lens, what it does, it compresses all the little droplets and you can see, you can pretty much see everything. But yes, it gets really dark out there when it got, it was really dark out there. So I had to bump up the ISO a little higher than usual, more than I would want it to be. So part of it's, uh, it looks grainy because of the rain for the most part. Yeah, I can hear all of our Polish friends telling us to stop complaining because it looks like this every <laughs> single day there. Um, but uh, yeah, this is amazing. It makes this whole site look a little bit ominous, <laughs> but uh, I really, I really like the effect that it has on the, on the images and it helps my, my lovely green mouse stick out a little bit more. That, that, uh, there's your $1 going to work there. <laughs> I appreciate <Awesome>. that. <laughs> and did you notice Jessica Kirsch was able to join us today in chat? Oh, hello, started. Jessica. Thank you for joining us. We have a few uh, a few recognizable names. Actually, most of them. It's it's nice seeing all of you guys in here. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for joining us. We have Starbase FR, who is, has a really good channel. Uh, if you guys ha aren't following him uh, on YouTube, uh, you got to understand French, but I think that they can <laughs> translate all that. Still, either way, really amazing. Um, our ship is universal. That's all ground truth was in here. Yeah. Ground Truth is in here. Great photos he was taking this week. Pretty sure he's on his lunch break, maybe. So hopefully we'll get to some good stuff before he has to get back to work. Uh, I see Starship 3D in here who makes some great renders. Amazing. Uh, wow, yeah, we got some. We got some heavy hitters. Awesome, uh, awesome attendees here. We also got some donations. GP Oscar was able to donate us um, ten Polish. Oscar, don't kill me, Zlatsky. And he says, "Stage Zero fans make some noise." Everybody loves them at stage zero. Look at you, GP. Oh, Your shoot. people are coming out of the woodwork. I just oh, noticed Nash no Joe calling me out saying that. I said, Twice. whoever whoever came through, <laughs> it's $50. And that sounds exactly like the way I said it. So, GPJ, uh, just forward me a Venmo request for $50 for getting that uh, logo for me. But you don't Do really you like money. So, I, I already know he's not going to accept it, guys. That's the problem. No, no, no. He'll you just donate send that it to right charity. on. Yeah, it's going straight. No, this one's going straight to Mauricio. We got to keep them flying. <laughs> yes, and in boots. There you go. And do you remember you gave us the disclaimer that people that w work with you are unable to enter your contest and be eligible for the fifty dollars? Oh, I you're right. Oh, Dang. There was, I specifically there was asked on the to do it. GPJ <laughs> right. just forgot. <laughs> See, I did the work even knowing that. That's, you know, it's called mind You're powers. You're a stand-up guy. <laughs> um, so one, stand up? <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I wanted to point out since, since Grandpa Joe brought up a really good point, uh, we mentioned last week that this is the test stand that needs to get moved over to the launch site in order to uh, replace what they removed off of test stand A. And uh, so this, this should disconnect off of here and be able to get mounted straight onto the other piece. I think the other test stand may require a little bit of uh, attention before they can do that. But this is also the same structure that the nose cone jail goes on top of. So if they do finish the new nose cone soon and want to do um, a max Q test on it, they're gonna need to get this off uh, and, and first so that they can put the nose cone jail back on top of here. So I would not be surprised if we saw this move to the launch site pretty soon. Um, 
probably shortly after they do the full stack on the nose cone. Um, but the one thing I'm thinking about that they might need in order to do that is a Starship forward dome. So maybe one of the ring watchers out there has noticed a random Starship forward dome that they may potentially, well, they definitely are going to need in order to do this kind of test. Uh, if you're if you have a random dome out there that you don't know what it's for, that's probably what it is. So uh, you can go ahead and label it as nose cone, Max Q nose cone. And or, then, or maybe uh, just uh, put no scrap on it or something. Yeah, no scrap. <laughs> Before you go too far away, there was a question about those staircase in the front of that image that you were showing us. Oh, they were, um, yeah, Mr. P is asking, could you perhaps talk about the staircase in front of this picture? Yeah. I, he may be talking about the gray ones even lower down the picture there. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh, no oh. about that. Typical oh, aircraft and <laughs> And probably Mr. P is not wondering about those ones. He's like, I've never been on a plane. I've never <laughs> seen any stairs like that before. They just roll them right up to the plane and you just walk in. <laughs> yep. Good old days. Right? Uh, oh, so <laughs> I'm guessing he's talking <laughs> about these. These are for the wide bay, actually. So they're, they just lifted earlier this week two sets of stairs into the wide bay. And... Uh, they they actually construct these behind the high bay, and it looks like they do um, one level at a time. So that's it, t it takes two sets of stairs in order to make one level. So they've 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 placed the first level last week or this week on Wednesday, and I imagine they're probably getting ready to start moving some of these over here so they can uh, start building the next set of stairs behind the um, high bay. And GP, now you owe GPJ 50 bucks because he, he, Mr. P said he was right. We are talking about those gray stairs. So good job, GPJ. <laughs> I'll take all the money. Uh, so I always wondered why they didn't put these stairs on the outside. It seems like putting them inside is going to take up some uh, valuable real estate. Um, well, I always wonder. Yeah. If you put them on the outside, then you have to add all of the cladding around the outside of it, um, mm -hmm. which... I don't, yeah, I mean, you, you take up some real estate on the inside, but uh, one thing to consider is the fact that the, uh, the corners of the wide bay aren't really accessible for vehicles. They actually have a triangular, um, matter of fact, let's just, let's just look at this really quick. It's kind of an area you can't stack a starship in anyway because it's so large and the uh, cranes can't reach there too well either so well yeah, that this is what sense. i'm thinking i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure where it's at but uh i am actually let's look at them on the side over here i don't know guys i think those are big enough to maybe fit in here and i look i when i saw them get lifted into here i'm pretty sure they lifted them into this corner i could be wrong but uh next time we get a flyover we'll probably see it i don't think they're taking up any real estate on the inside they yeah like i said they look like they perfectly slide right down there which is where i saw them lift them in um and that's a, actually in my opinion a really good use of space because you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to push a vehicle into this corner and on top of that if s and alliance f's and nines reincarnated um starship parts ever make it back to <laughs> starbase we may get another one fall over inside to the wide bay fingers crossed that doesn't happen but if it does and it fell over into this corner, at least the stairway is protected by this shield. So um, that'll be nice. Uh, so again, hopefully it doesn't stairway? happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, what if you're walking down the stairs and the, the whole starship just falls over? I mean, uh, I mean, first of oh, all, hopefully I mean, they have somewhere to clean yourself up during, near the bottom. <laughs> but, <laughs> right after you um, hit the bottom. Uh, I, yeah. was, I was very pleasantly surprised that High Bay survived SN9 falling over as well as it did. It really uh, is a testament to the uh, the strength of these buildings. As far as we know, it did. Yeah. And it just uh, leaned a little bit. It didn't actually fall over. I don't it's think we've heavy. ever seen pictures inside the corner. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And again, this is just speculation, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a small amount of damage from it. And potentially, I don't even know if you can... Uh, if you can replace things like this once the building is fully assembled or not. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if once this building is done, they start um, doing some renovations to this one in order to reinforce it and or repair potential damage that it may have. Um, and again, that's just speculation. There's no proof of that. I just, I just would be surprised if there was no structural damage to this building. 
And you think that structural damage would be from SN9, or do you think it would be from the water underneath moving? A uh, combination of things. I mean, I would imagine potentially there's a little bit of structural damage on the front corner from SN9. Um, there's probably a little bit of base damage. Like, uh, this is super speculation. I just don't think that this is supposed to be lifting as heavy of vehicles as they've been lifting in here, which is why they've reinforced the base of this one so much more than they did with this one. I mean, the, the, the amount of work they put into the base of the wide bay is like three or four times more what they did for the high bay. So, um, I don't know. I, I, like I said, it's speculation. I just don't think that they really want to be lifting boosters in here at all. And they want to lift lighter loads like starship nose cones so that they don't have to worry about it sinking or anything like that. Whereas any heavy load in here, uh, it'll, this is much more well suited for it. So, uh, speaking of stairs and speculation, if they're putting <laughs> stairs in the wide bay, then they must be coming up or, or coming down from somewhere. So that means either they're going to have uh, an area that is accessible by people regularly on the top of wide bay, or even, even this is super speculation, uh, much like the vehicle assembly building at NASA. Perhaps they could even have stages where people are walking up to an area where they're assembling and putting uh, uh, loads, integrating loads into the starships. So they could do both styles. So, and did, uh, sorry, GB. I was just going to ask real fast. Ayush was asking, did the star case, staircase excuse me, in High Bay have covers? Um, no. The staircase in the inside the... Oh, yes, it does. Um, the one inside the high bay has cladding on it similar to the outside of the building. Um, it's covered on three sides, and I believe it's in this front corner right here. So one thing I wanted to point out, we have 304 people watching. Jessica Kirsch is in here as well, and she would not stand for there being only 151 likes when there's 300 people in here. So unless you guys want Jessica to freak out, like, we got to get those lights up. I don't, I don't, Nobody I don't want wants her to have a bad Saturday. So <laughs> let's just, let's just get them up guys. We'll, oh. we'll be able to continue on. Um, but let's get back to the ground shots. Eh? Yeah. Je Jessica's such a sweetheart. I don't think she could have a bad day. <laughs> Appreciate you for being here, Jessica. If you guys okay. haven't seen her live streams, make sure you uh, subscribe to her channel as well. She does great shots outside the launch site. Every other day, if not every day, and they're like I haven't seen one that I don't like recently. So, um, yeah, you guys make sure you tune into that. And, uh, and thank you, Jessica, amazing. for being here to support. She has amazing emojis too. Sorry, TV. She has what? Amazing emojis. Oh, are you talking about on Discord? Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't know they made special emojis. <laughs> <laughs> she has a few customized ones that are really good. It's quite a few, actually. Sorry, I digress. You're good. I, I was just confused a little bit. Um, are we... Girl. <laughs> so, like no major changes into... on all those pictures. And surprise! What are we looking at yeah. here? Is this Starship 24? Well, what I, what I want to know... Hopefully somebody, one of the ring watchers can tell me this. First of all, I don't know which, which starship this is, but number uh, more importantly, this jig for the um, nose cone flap. I don't see the second one. I'm not sure if they've already put it on, but there's a chance that it could be further behind, which means this is the new flap position, but I don't know. Hopefully somebody else can figure out number one if they actually have ever if they're normally mounted up this high on the nose cone and uh two i guess if we've i guess we're not going to see this from the backside to see if the other jig is on there as well um Mauricio, do you think you can get a picture from the backside there just walk on back to... <laughs> you are going to have those boots soon i don't know about that you know something that's <laughs> You got to be lucky sometimes when you go out there because the, sometimes the tents are closed. You can't really peek inside sometimes. So, uh, speaking of tents, got to be lucky. You know, if you work hard, it's amazing how much luck comes to you. 
Uh, speaking of tents, uh, last week we uh, we had some uh, discussion about you know, places that they could be making uh, booster stands. And the folks on the Lab Padre uh, Discord reminded me, you know, they could be making the uh, the stands for the boosters in any of the uh, mushroom, onion, any of these large tents. Uh, we could fit them in and uh, roll them straight out of there, and we'd never see them until they came out ready to pick up a booster. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out that we didn't mention before, I saw CSI Starbase joined as a member earlier, so uh, it looked like it was before the stream started. So thank you, CSI Starbase, for joining as a member to the channel. If, if you guys want to join as a member well as well and get your name green uh, in, the, in the chat, then uh, just hit that join button and become a member of the channel. And uh, I also, oh wow, just noticed a few other people hopping here. It looks like we have Eric from... Uh, sorry to bust you out like this from latest in space. If you guys have ever followed latest in space on Twitter, it's an excellent Twitter account that posts a whole bunch of uh, just space related content, amazing photos. Uh, so make sure you guys give him a follow. I don't know if we can have somebody posted in the, the comments is a Twitter handle, but yeah, definitely, definitely a great uh, team space account to follow. I would say. I was just about to say Team Space, uh, you know, if anybody else out there has a uh, fledgling channel or, uh, you know, if you're a photographer out on site, you know, hit, let us know in the comments and we'll be glad to talk to you here, Twitter spaces, et cetera. Definitely. You know, we're all about the community. <laughs> and then a special thanks to Sebastian for his $1.79 donation in pounds. It all goes to RGV and we appreciate you. Thank you, Sebastian. Good man. All right, so here we're looking at all the studs for a uh, four-ring uh, four barrel section for um, a Starship. And, um, you know, it's a Starship because it's got the studs for the heat tiles. Boosters don't have heat tiles. And is that, uh, could you zoom in to the top left there, Zach? <laughs> are, are we seeing two separate header tank vents there, or is that the lifting points? Those are the lifting points, yeah. Oh, Man, I was hoping. You got yourself were... excited for a second. Yeah, I got myself excited. It's like, did I make a discovery? We'd see the um, where they bind it, right, with the welding. The dark. Oh yeah, you can see yeah where the where the brackets are welded on up here mm -hmm. for the um, two header tanks, though. Yeah, I was ta I was thinking this down here could potentially be the donut shaped one, but I don't know. I haven't seen any renders showing what that looks like yet, or maybe I just missed it. <laughs> Jessica Kirsch says, who's behind CSI Starbase? I'm behind CSI Starbase plus uh, my entire team. So, uh, you know, I, I, I thought about it for a while, like removing my my face off of there and my name and just have it be a CSI Starbase because I really do have a large team that helps me put stuff together. Um, but um, I, I think I, I think I should follow the ways of Marcus House and leave leave your first and last name and just roll with it. Never change your first and last name unless you get married or something but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so yeah i i i'm i'm csi starbase zach golden aka golden boy uh it drives grandpa joe crazy because he never knows what he should be calling me but you guys can just <laughs> choose what you want you often hear grandpa joe say hey you <laughs> hey guys um it'll be interesting to see if somebody can put a side-by-side -side picture of the mark one nose cone with one of these smoother ones just to show the difference. You know, I know the first one was not pretty at all. <laughs> <laughs> Even a yeah. triple side by side comparison with the banana peel would be good too, in the middle. You know, I'm, it, really, I'm... it really is amazing the improvement in quality. Just uh, part of them growing as a facility is refining their processes and moving from, you know, stick welding to, uh, TIG welding to who knows, maybe they're even using a little bit of laser welding and it's producing these phenomenally smooth, uh, transitions between, uh, different sections. Uh, and part of that is the clean room, the cleaner environment that they have now. I mean, those welds are just really nice welds. Uh, and also the staff that are producing these are doing better. They're increasing their skill as well. So they definitely have a really good uh, process improvement and training plan. You know, uh, 
I'm a little distracted right now because I'm really excited about this logo that uh, Grandpa Joe made for me, and I'm I'm I just wanted to post that really quick. So, yay, Grandpa Joe! Be on the lookout for that, Grandpa Joe. You really made my day with that. I appreciate Seriously. it, and Mauricio as well for taking that picture. I'm uh, super you, excited. Man. Oh, look at this! Got some uh, booster arrow covers for booster five. The booster, oh, for the nice. booster that may never fly. <laughs> Probably will never fly. I hope they scrap it soon, honestly. Like, I, I would really, uh, it would, it would, to me, scrapping Booster 5 would show that they're really serious about getting towards uh, their first orbital launch because still under, I'm under the opinion that Booster 4 won't, fire, uh, won't fly and it's most likely going to be Booster 7. Yeah. And in order for that to happen, they need this transport stand because they don't have another one. So the quicker they scrap Booster 5, the better, in my opinion. Uh, we'll see whether or not they take my advice. Maybe we can <laughs> get Elon on the show next week and explain to him why we think they need to scrap it as soon as possible. But uh, in the meantime, uh, he, he has our information at the bottom of the screen, Elon. If you, if you want to get in contact with us, let us know. We'll pencil you in for next week. And I just noticed Shenandoah Smith donated $19.99. Thank you so much. That's amazing. And Niall did five pounds, five British pounds as well. Just oh, I missed that. Yeah. I missed that he one. I think I missed you, another Niall. one above that. Sorry. He says, thank you for being an awesome team. And he put hey. the like Kirsch Sunflower. Team space. Hey. Did we get Sebastian Boyle earlier as well, too? He donated. Yes, uh, sir. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Just didn't yeah. want to make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, if if we it... do miss you, know that we do appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> We won't miss you. That's ADD. what will happen. There you go. <laughs> uh, so Elon did put out an offer that uh, if anybody wanted these starships, uh, they were free. You just had to pay for shipping. <laughs> so if anybody's uh, municipal government uh, or you know maybe even a private collection wants to buy a starship, they're uh, they're up for grabs. So uh, you know and maybe we know it's time we people. start. Yeah, maybe we start talking to city councils or governors. <laughs> uh, Maybe we'll we'll get one pop up somewhere. Can you imagine? We have a pop up Starbase store. <laughs> they just start making a tour of the U.S. along the rivers and coast. You know, <laughs> it's a funny story that I actually wanted a piece of a starship. You know, it was back last year, I think, and I figured that I actually found out who the scrapyard. Um, <laughs> The scrapyard company was and actually oh, went nice. and they actually they actually sold me a panel of it was scrap i'm not sure where it came from or but it was mangled up like they were you know scrapping it and they actually sold it to me they bought about 60 pounds of stainless steel from the shipyard not 60? sure they can do that yeah it's about 60. it could have been more i have several panels wow but it was there it's pretty heavy I have it there in the garage. I don't know what to do with it, you know. <laughs> oh, sir, you you could make a uh, you could make a bumper business cutting those into small pieces and selling. <laughs> you can make little dog tags out of them too. Little little keychains. That's what I have. Yeah, in like cutting up little starships. Get together with Wigan. So yeah, that's so, you my know, story. We. <laughs> We were talking about the transport stand and you were talking about um, removing Booster 5 and everything. There is a question from Rob Shaw where he's asking, how will they or will they build something to transfer starships from the staging stand to the chopsticks? Since we don't have stands um, available? They usually will just use the SPMTs. Um, the transport stand that the starship is sitting on is similar to the one that the booster is sitting on, except it's way shorter. Matter of fact, uh, well, all of them are about the same. They're they're all this high off the ground. The SPMTs just drive underneath it, lift it up, and drive it over to the chopsticks. So they're not going to need anything extra in order to get it over there. Um, the the t the stand that Ship Twenty is sitting on is both transport stand and a test stand. And I would not be surprised if we see them do the same thing with the next booster stand. And that's probably the reason why they. Uh, haven't started making one yet is because they're trying to figure out how they can mount a QD onto this thing and or still designing the QD that would go on the transport stand. Uh, I would not be surprised if we see one of those roll out soon, actually. 
I, you know what, Zach? Uh, I had not considered that that is exactly what they're doing, that it's going to be a test stand and transport stand. I was only thinking of it in terms of transportation and keeping it pressurized. But no, with a fully integrated quick disconnect, you could test this anywhere. You could have as many test mm-hmm. pads as you want now. Mm-hmm. Just move the, uh, move the uh, quick disconnects feeder pipes to it, and you're ready to go. Yeah, and that's one thing. Um, let's see if I can find a good picture. And you can move it from testing to chopstick lift uh, very quickly. Also, uh, it is uh, common, if not required, before every launch to do a static fire. Uh, every launch of the Falcon, they perform a, a static fire. Not a full duration one, but uh, they do a, a static fire before launch. So... With Starship, it makes total sense that before every launch, they might want to do a little static fire. Yeah, and I, I think I have a good image of it right here. Okay. Um, That's it was, a good this image, was a, though. Yeah, this was a tough day because you got this huge tower just in the way for some reason, <laughs> um, creating this massive shadow. But this is the uh, transport stand for Ship 20. And uh, for those of you, I kind of I, I made a long post about this last night. Uh, so if you haven't read it, check it out. But this is one of the things that I talked about, which was the fact that this transport stand um, is meant to be connected on the staging pad. There's another staging pad right here for the booster, but it's all covered up by dirt. Um, and it allows them connect to connect directly to the these fuel lines in the back of the berm, um, which also connect it to the launch mount. So essentially, the launch mount and this test stand are connected together at the same time. So they're they're both on the same system. Uh, I take that back. So the booster stand right here is the one that should be connected to the launch mount, and the Starship would be connected to the launch tower. Um, so this is, again, this is a, a transport stand and a test stand. Uh, the, when booster 2.1 was here, it was in this position and they were using the booster staging pad in order to do those tests. So they commissioned, I say with air quotes, commissioned the booster um, staging pad at least all the way up to here. And they did the same thing with the Starship staging pad all the way up to here. And again, this is part of testing the tower in my opinion. So we should see them start to test the tower soon because the Starship goes in the tower. So this is the one that should be connected to the tower. Um, and important thing to note about this is that having this means that they could theoretically do a cryo test on a fully stacked booster and starship and a booster and starship on the ground. So they could do four oh, cryo wow. tests at the same time with this setup. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's so, so uh, cool. Phil, yeah, Philikit is saying that you could only do a cryo test as it's uh, too short and would damage the starship. So I may have to retract that speculation. <laughs> what What was the uh, which speculation? Uh, uh, that you could do a, a static fire on the uh, on the new test stand. It's too short. You, it's, you would yeah, it's too short. Theor- yeah. Theoretically, you could do it, but uh, yeah, it's only too short. once. <laughs> only once. It'll probably <laughs> take the stand with it. <laughs> Does the size of the quick uh, disconnect on the stand define whether it's going to be Starship or Booster? That's um, to it? Yeah, the I think just the stand that it's on in general. I mean, if you see yeah, if you see it on the ground dis- without the stand, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. The, the quick disconnect uh, between the Starship and the Booster are different interfaces. Mm-hmm. So they're not universal. So, yeah, uh, you can't interchange them. You'd have to swap out the quick disconnect. So when we're testing on the stand, we'd always have to use booster. We couldn't use Starship in theory if it's the booster one, or we would have to switch the quick disconnect face. Oh, also the booster skirt is different from the Starship skirt. So once again, that more more isolates that you can't put a Starship on a booster disconnect, on a booster uh, test stand. So the only way we would see it is if it's stacked on top of a booster. I'm I'll sorry. Take I your to be yes. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, if we're talking about the test stands, the Starship can only go on a Starship test stand, and or a Starship transport stand, and a booster can only go on a booster test stand or booster transport stand. And the uh, the quick disconnect would be 
You can have a quick disconnect on the test stand or on the transport stand for either variety. Um, so you. there was something important about this image that I forgot. It was cracked. <laughs> you see oh. the drive shaft that's all cracked uh, to the, the clamps. Yeah, to the left. Oh, this one. Yeah. So, was the booster tougher than the pistons? Is that what we're getting here? <laughs> Shoot, all I know is they put a lot of uh, a lot of force on it. I think Mauricio got a good picture of a leak on um, booster two point one. I don't think it's in this in, in these images, but uh, yeah, he saw it. It looked like it had a pinhole leak on the side of it. But yeah, this is interesting. If these things actually cracked, they're probably getting ready to ship them back. And replace them, <laughs> and the like same thing with the, uh, And I think also these clamps right here on the um, on these pallets are mm -hmm. possibly brand new, and uh, they are they may be replacing what they removed off of the can crusher. So mm -hmm. that means we may potentially see um, another uh, crush another can. test. Yeah. Very exciting. And this came off of the can crusher, right? Those pistons you were pointing at, the ones that are cracked, they actually simulate the force of yeah, the Yeah, these, these pistons right here. Actually, uh -huh. they're the interior ones, I believe, that they pulled out. Uh, before we get too much further, I'd like to quote uh, Eric, who uh, said, don't worry, be hoppy. That, I'm <laughs> stealing that. It's my new tagline. <laughs> Um, somebody says there were raptor mounts on the piston. I don't see raptor mounts on these pistons. I think they're supposed to be representing the raptors, aren't they not? Yeah. Uh, but... Not on the can crusher, they're not. They're, they're only they're pulling simulating the... the... In a way, yes, they are. Yeah, they're okay. simulating. Yeah, so... It sits oh, we'll on a yeah. It sits on those uh, stands uh, to simulate it sitting on the launch table, and then it's pulling down to simulate uh, the weight. Um, I guess if it's testing for max Q, they would have something that would simulate the Raptors mounting in, but that would be on the test stand, not on the uh, hydraulic pistons. The hydraulic pistons just connect to those cables that are tied top and bottom. And after that, yeah, it's the, that's all. So it's it's not simulating a raptor directly on the piston. Some interesting uh, equipment back here. I wonder what this is. Oh wow! Never noticed this before. Seems to have something behind it too. Uh, yeah, this one is this this is a uh, puck chucker for the test stand B or A. I guess it can go in either. Um, puck shucker. I love a puck shucker. Let's see. It's like an oyster shucker. Except you don't kill your hands. Mm -hmm. Go for you think oysters. that black thing goes on top of the other stand? Mm, I don't know. I've never. I can't. I've never seen it before, and it it wasn't on there before. But uh, I might have to check in on that one again. Do so this is a uh, Star, Starship Twenty Two. Oh, go ahead, Andy. No, I was just saying we have to do some CSI investigation on that black Absolutely. Thing. So here we have Starship 22 in production. Could be in contention to get the next nose cone and be the next fully stacked Starship. Um, any, any speculation as to why they are uh, taking so long to stack Starship 22, or 21 for that matter? Well, I think one of the big things is that some of the construction methods have changed. So one thing that they did this week, which you can see they're still in the process of, is mounting the entire raceway. So in the past, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they've they've put all of these pieces on individually, but now they have it on a rack, which allows them to mount the entire raceway at the same time. Um, so and, I see the uh, the rack. The uh, it could be a jig for mounting, or it could be part of the structure to mount a uh, a shield to it. Do you think that uh, that bracing is going to stay? Or, this one in the middle. Yeah, everything's attached to that. Um, I I think that yes, that does allow for something else to go on top of it. Um, I'm actually also thinking that there's a possibility that 
this part right here might actually fold down. I think you're right. Uh, I was reviewing some pictures of uh, SN16, and uh, it looked like that went down to the next area. Isn't That's that the really piece cool. that goes like diagonally out with the cables? Also, um, Maxi, Max Q is telling us that the, it's kind of a mixture of last gen and this gen ships, our, our Starship 22. And GPJ, that jig you were mentioning, it actually gets removed. Ah. Uh. Well, we haven't seen the new ships yet, so we don't know if it, if it will, in fact, be removed. I mean, typically, yes, they do remove them, especially if they're using them for uh, mounting the arrow covers. But, I mean, there's no... Or for drilling the holes or whatever for the arrow covers. Um, but really quickly, before we change subjects, I wanted to just point out uh, these chain falls right here that are attached, it looks like, to uh, this part of the structure. So... Once this is fully mounted, it looks like they can just lower the chains and oops and fold and have this fold down to here. Oh well. Yeah. So it'll they'll just get up here on a man basket. I wouldn't be surprised if they've already done it. They just um, ratchet the chains. You guys have seen them do that when they're trying to level out the tower sections before they lifted them and the and the chopsticks and the carriage and all that stuff. These are the same things, just smaller, um, and that will allow them to lift all of, or put this in all at once instead of uh, spending weeks doing it. So this will be really exciting. We probably so, won't get uh, to see them do it. But. Mauricio, I wanted to ask you, how did you get this shot? Uh, so the mid bay is not visible from the road uh, as you come in down Highway 4. So uh, how, do you, how do you get these shots? There's a small gap between the high bay and the mid bay on the west side of um, the build site on Remedios Road. You you pretty much have to pull up on the side of the road and and you get a a slight view of inside the mid bay, but that's pretty much it. Usually, you can only see one ship at a time when you're there out. There you go. So it's right off Remedius Road. Yes. Do we know what that showerhead looking thing is? I you think that's just head? covered in uh, it's covered in duct tape, uh, but it it's just the end of one of those pipes, and it should fold down and connect into uh, something on the lower end. Um, Got it. Not sure if those are electrical electrical conduit or uh, hydraulics or uh, autogenous pressurization. <laughs> By the way, autogenous pressurization is just a fancy word for saying that the rocket heats up liquid and turns it into gas that repressurizes the um, the vehicle. Hence, uh, autogenous. Yeah, uh, these vehicles do not fare well without a lot of pressure. Uh, six six bar. Uh, that is uh, pretty close, I believe, to a uh, a coke can, uh, at least in model. <laughs> Uh, in in terms of weight and thickness as well, a uh, a coke can is a pretty good analogy for the the structure of a starship. And if you take all the pressure out, it becomes quite easy to dent it, crush it. But uh, with pressure, it's uh, pretty sturdy. Uh, just don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have under pressure stuck in my head. Thank you, GP. At least oh, it's not you. ice ice, baby. <laughs> Even better images of that chain fall in the jig. There we go. Yeah, the jig definitely looks like it gets removed. So, you guys are probably right about that. Bring a cryo test. It to gets time. too cold. <laughs> too cold. I think everything is the same on ship 21. We haven't really seen any changes there. Uh, unidentifiable, unidentifiable ring sections, but there's a, sure is a bunch of them. Or rings for the ring watchers. Yep. Are so, those the five ring ones? The new five ring ones? Um, it looks pretty tall. I'm not sure. Kind of hard to tell from here. Yeah. Yeah. What do we got? Okay, so it looks like they we I mean, we saw them lift this piece up earlier today. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were 
already preparing to disconnect and get hooked up to the next one, uh, which is right behind it, you can see. And the other two are right here, one right here, and then I barely see. Actually, I can't see the, the fourth one. Actually, I do see it right here. This is the fourth one in the background. So it looks like uh, they're getting pretty close on all of them. And I mean, they had a lot of weather delays this week from the rain, so I wouldn't be surprised if all of them, all four of them are ready to go. Um, and with these walkways up here, uh, it's really easy for them to install these bolts. It's, I don't get why they didn't just do that on every single section, because it looks like it's faster than using a man basket. But, you know, I'm not a project manager, so. Um, I think it'll be exciting to see how quickly they get this fourth level on and also to see them start assembling the fifth level. But uh, we'll see what that fifth level ends up looking like. Oh, this is an amazing shot. Fortunately, got this big headed starship right here blocking the view of the wide bay section, but it's OK. Give them a pass. Been out in the rain for quite a while. Oof. Lots of holes drilled out of these, or cut out of these. I hope other people are getting anxious and want to get to the launch site like me, because sometimes it's stressful. I almost wish, I almost wish Mauricio could land on a helicopter on the beach and then get in a car and start from that direction and move back. That would make him the president. Or Elon, yeah. He's still a president. Oh, there we go. This is actually really exciting. I love the way this looks. It's funny because from this distance, it doesn't look that big. Uh, you, especially, you can't really tell how tall it is from here. But uh, the fact that they keep it connected to the crane right now is interesting. My one thing about this is, again, like I just don't get why it does seem like they're getting close to doing a full stack when they don't have anything to stack it on. But who knows, maybe they'll surprise us with something uh, that we haven't seen before. But So like Mongrel 3.0? No, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, as far as like something to do a full stack on that we haven't seen yet. Uh. Like a low, a low lying or a low profile um, stand that can hold that much weight. Okay. So this is another new nose cone. One of the uh, one of the new method of welding that they they've started using as far as having the banana peels. <laughs> um, I think that one could be the one uh, destined for the uh, bird cage. Ooh, uh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is kind of weird because of the way that the tiles, the uh, pins are located. Um, I, I actually, that. Yeah. yeah, I traced them out. Um, earlier just to see if I could figure out what kind of shape it was creating, like if this is a flap right here or if the flap is actually going to be right here. Uh, but I, it looked really weird when I did it. I, it didn't make any sense. So I guess we'll have to wait and see if somebody comes up with an explanation of whether or not this is the same design or completely different as far as the tiles go, I'm kind of predicting what, what these flaps are going to look like. But I'm not the guy but for that. And by somebody, do you mean Davery or John Tate or Max Q? So many people. Anybody. I mean, any, if anybody can, I mean, probably, preferably somebody who can model it, uh, actually show what this might look like. So, GPJ, you're out of the running. No money for you, buddy. Uh, I think he can do it. I know he can do it. I've already got too much. I'll let somebody else do it. He just should. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm skipping past these, and people are going to be very upset if I do. So this, <laughs> this is the uh, cargo bay doors. I which, would have been very upset. Yeah, if you guys have seen um, a great render by, uh, was it Ryan Hansen who did this one? Or, no, yes. it was... Uh, Ryan Hansen Space did it. Yes. Um, he released it, it yesterday morning. Right, yeah, it shows, it shows yeah. basically the uh, mechanism by which this thing will open itself. So if you guys haven't seen that... Um, I don't know. Maybe, I wonder if we can somehow. I think we could watch that. Do it uh, in the could... chat. Or oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, I can just Wait. play it. One second. Yeah, um, you can. 
I have simple. faith in you. Uh, yep, but I have a question about that. Free. Go ahead. He has in what what we are about to see is that he has the door open from the bottom. Would it not make sense for the door to open from the top and then to have um, a bridge crane or something coming out so it can do the whole lifting and moving the cargo? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would have to agree. Hey, look at me. I think there's I the any number any number of good ways to do this. Uh, it looks like they put the door to kind of hinge right at the uh, common dome, which may be just structurally one of the better places to put it. Uh, that said, we're working in zero G. Everything <laughs> has mass and momentum, but it doesn't have weight. So you could pretty easily slowly open the cargo bay door with very little structure behind it and be in very low risk of causing it an issue. Agreed. So I, yeah, I think you could really do it either way. Uh, I do see some advantage to having the mechanism down by the common dome because you're not inter, uh, like putting any of the mechanism into the cargo bay space that way. And you could fit possibly more cargo in. I don't know, GPD. Not that you're not correct. You're always correct. I just have a different opinion. Well, with the way that it looks right here, this would have to move up in order to fold down. So, And that's the way it unhooks. If you look at Ryan's video, that he, or his render, he shows how it unlocks. Yeah. He shows the door go up to unlock it, and then it folds down according to his video. Y'all have to watch this video if you haven't seen it. The render's amazing. Yeah, I would show right now, but um, I'm trying to not stream other stuff while I'm also streaming. Uh, <laughs> just to keep the quality up. So I just realized that would have been a bad idea. So I'm not going to do it. But it's an amazing stream, I th amazing video. And uh, if you guys haven't seen it, look up Ryan Hansen Space on either Twitter or YouTube because it's definitely, definitely a nice little render that kind of shows exactly what we think it's going to look like. What is that? <laughs> Oh, this looks like the okay, the tent of some sort. A very Little, tiny small tent. one. Yeah. We so got... we were talking about nose cones before you go too far away. There's a question from your cousin Liam. He's asking, when will they start to see update to nose cone flaps? Didn't Elon say a whole uh, a while ago that there was an error with the initial design? Uh, not an error, but they they changed the flaps to move them. Um, higher up and uh, on the on the nose cone, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of touched it based on that. If you guys can figure out what those um, heat tiles end up looking, then we'll probably get the answer to that. But I don't. I mean, anything else is kind of speculation on that one. We haven't really. Uh, I haven't seen what it what it will look like, and they haven't mentioned it to us yet. Uh, if Elon comes on the show, he can tell us whether or not that's the that was the one we're looking at right there. But uh, until <laughs> then, I guess we may have to wait on some renders. Uh, and if you need, if you need some reference on what we need a render of, uh, make sure you join Mauricio's um, Patreon, or uh, I think you can also get it on this or on YouTube if you join his YouTube channel. Uh, if you if you guys haven't done that, make sure you do it now. He actually will send out a Dropbox link for all of his ground pictures. There was 174 of them that he took this time. So uh, if you guys want to go through these on your own after or also while we're going through it right now um uh just join the channel and you will be able to have access to that uh that dropbox file and look at all of these pictures as well and while you're at it make sure you guys like uh like like the video if you haven't already um definitely appreciate all you guys being here it looks like there's about 371 of you right now which is amazing um yeah so thank you guys for being here and uh yeah again just like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this stuff. And, you know, it, it was kind of tough doing a Wednesday live stream this week. And I'm not going to say that we won't do it again. But if we do, it's probably going to be a surprise. So I would recommend turning on those alerts so that you, uh, you know, find out when we're going to be going live. And, and if we do another Wednesday live stream in the future. Woot woot. Can we talk about the door a little bit more? We want to move on. Um, I mean, what were you going to ask? I was just going to ask real fast. Uh, on behalf of Ayush, he's asking, can they have a design where the door turns 180 so it makes it easier to load the payload? Um, uh, 
So it may be easier for the payload to be loaded with it opening towards the bottom because it may involve a crane loading it in, which comes from the top. Just a thought. But yeah, they could look. They could turn it to where it opens to the side, to the top, where it splits in the middle. Uh, anything's possible. Um, and I'm sure they will try all of those. So they'll <laughs> try everything, see which one works out best, and or just stop with the first one that works. Yeah, Thomas was talking about a clamshell potentially yesterday. I love and then there was. Here. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, there was one more question about the nose cone. Um, lifting from the top, or sorry, from the door. Lifting from the top would prevent the sats from being moved forward due to the door being in the way. So again, I guess if they put it at the top, um, Mike is saying that the issue will become getting those satellites out of Starship. Do you guys foresee that as an issue? Uh, you know, there, there's a number of ways you could unload and stage the uh, satellites. Uh, traditionally, with most rockets, the whole fairing just blows off and the satellite has freedom to uh, come off in any number of directions. That said, with uh, more recent uh, small sat innovations, they've been like Transporter 3 that recently launched on a, on a Falcon 9. They're able to uh, disperse hundreds of satellites that are all bound up together from multiple directions, but basically out of a, a bay. Uh, so, you know, uh, they have a lot of experience with different methods of loading and unloading uh, satellites. Uh, you could even see a, uh, like a magazine style uh, where a, a Starlink, relatively flat and regularly shaped, could just be kicked out through a slot repeatedly uh just like you do with a magazine uh the the bullet type magazine not the uh reading cosmopolitan style magazine <laughs> do you mean my style magazine <laughs> i was talking about my subscription but we won't go into that i was talking about your subscription too i was trying to cover <laughs> it for you <laughs> um so it looks like somebody wants to send in a uh their idea for design, I think up on the nose cone, I'm trying not to read the chat that much because it's very distracting, but I <laughs> did have noticed, um, I think, I believe Michelle Becker mentioning mm -hmm. it. Um, so uh, if one of the mods maybe could just give her a link to Discord and then maybe uh, she could send it that way, um, that's probably gonna be the best way. There's not really another way to post it here, but yeah, Discord would probably be the best way if you're trying to send us like a picture or a render or something like that. Um, we can probably probably get you through that way. Would Twitter work too? She could always DM it to me. Yeah, that that works as well too. If you uh, you see our our um, Twitter handles on the bottom, if you guys haven't followed um, RGB CSI Starbase Grandpa Joe and Indiesar, please do so. Um, and yeah, if you want to send that to either me or Indian Star or Michelle, uh, you can you can or do both. it that way as well. Yeah. You could send it to the whole CSI team. We'd be happy to take a look at it. We don't need duplicates. One is good. Spam <laughs> is never fun. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I recently, I, I think on the last episode said, I love DMs. <laughs> Changed my mind this week, guys. Somebody, a lot of people ruined that. I don't love them <laughs> anymore. Uh, there's lots of great things that happen in DMs as far as like just coordinating with new photographers or people who are like excited about projects they're working on. Then you get those random guys. You just got to ruin them for everybody. Um, anyways, moving on. <laughs> We're finally at the uh, launch site. Yay! Looking at uh, the SpaceX crane. Uh, what was it named? Mervin? Marvin. Marvin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lieber 1100XL. Uh, so one question that, that often comes up, and I've, I'm no crane expert, but I've been told <laughs> that uh, this particular crane if needed could have its boom it's a uh, boom extended so that if needed it could lift the starship and place it on top of the booster on top of the table do you know if that's true uh indian star or, or zach i think that it's possible but i wouldn't be surprised if it needed to 
possibly switch over to a power boom configuration, given the weight that it would be lifting, but I don't know. I'm not a crane expert. I'm not sure what it would take to get it up there, but I mean, as far as I know, this crane can do everything that um, Kong, which was the LR11350, uh, it can do everything that that one can, just requires some reconfiguration. So uh, th I think the difference with this one in Kong is that this one doesn't need a suspended counterweight tray in order to do most of the work that it does. But I don't know, maybe in that situation, it might actually need it. But um, we have to... Chances are we will never have to find out because they are so far along with the chopsticks. It may never need to be used in that configuration. Agreed. That said, yeah, it, is, it is really helpful to have a rescue option if, uh, <laughs> if a starship gets stuck up there and uh, needs to come down. <laughs> Instead of yelling man down there like, starship up, starship up. No. Um, but you know, I really like the name Marvin for this crane. A lot of people I see him in the comments saying that they think it should be Crane X. Uh, if you can go look at Elon's dog and tell me that it's not <laughs> colored the same way as this crane, uh, I don't know. If you ever see pictures of him, I think you will agree that this crane should be called Marvin. And if you've ever seen videos of Marvin wandering around location, uh, yeah, this is Marvin. Anyways, so continuing on, no need to have debates about names. Um, it looks like Booster 3 is almost finished being, oh my, look at all these torch marks on here. Right? That is insane. Looks They're like a really broken down it. amusement park. I think there's a lot of people in here who would like, after just a rough day, would love to like just volunteer their time to scrap Booster Smash. 5 or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Like, just give me a torch. I'll scrap Booster 5. Don't worry about it. Stand back. I got this one. I've cut through that stuff with an angle grinder, and let me tell you, a torch would be much more preferable. <laughs> but, uh, you know, m m much like your uh, CSI uh, investigations, a good autopsy can really be enlightening as well, and uh, you can learn a lot just looking at the, uh, the old the old corpse of uh, Booster Three here. Uh, you can see the uh, injectors where the liquid oxygen comes through to the outside Raptors, and there are only ten of them. And anyway, lots of interest, uh, interesting things you can learn by looking at those. If you are a Patreon for RGV, you can get those photos <laughs> in a Dropbox. Patreon's the best way to go, too. Mauricio gets a good portion of that money versus YouTube or some of the other ways, but that shouldn't stop you from donating. You can donate on YouTube. You can donate on Patreon. You can donate to RGV directly through, I think, PayPal, too. All sorts of ways to donate and let him know that you really appreciate all the hard work he does. Thank you for the pictures, Mauricio. We could not and would not know as much as we do if it wasn't. For exactly. I personally just slip him a 50 every time I see him <laughs> down at Starbase. That's how I donate. <laughs> every time you're down at Starbase? So eight times now he's gotten money? Good for him. Just thank you, everybody, for that. I've been kind of absent right now. I'm trying to book a flyover right now. And I just, it's really tough. Oh, no woohoo's yet in my <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so everybody's really positive. If anybody knows a pilot out there that can fly me right now over the site, right now it's perfect for a flyover. Where's Balloon Just Chaser when we need him? Send, send him my way. We'll call the mayor of uh, Port Isabel. He's an avid, uh, he's an avid tank watcher. Right, so I think that Mr. Pleasant wanted us to zoom in on these. I think I don't know if this was the right picture that he was looking for. Let me go back. He was looking for some pallets. Um, it could be this one. I don't think that was it. Uh, so the 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 one that we saw on this side was the there was a bunch of uh all the pipework for the engines that they probably pulled out of booster three laying in scrap bins. Um, at least I think that's what those are, but we let's see if Oscar will say whether or not this is what he was looking for. So uh, one of the beauties of uh, of this hobby is uh, if you really want to get down into the nitty gritty, you have to go through and pour through all these photos 
study them and understand what each of the little parts do and how they all interconnect. Or, you know, hang out with Zach and wait for him to explain everything to you. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. <laughs> Actually, we haven't talked much this week, Grandpa Joe. I was uh, wondering it's been a busy week to. for both of us. Me too, man. This uh, chain isn't going to supply itself, is what we say at my job. <laughs> Um, one thing I wanted to point out about this picture is, uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people are familiar with this or not, but this is basically the, uh, Raptor installation platform, um, that is, is made for the orbital launch mount. The funny thing about this thing is that they haven't used it for working on the orbital launch mount when it, to me, seems like the perfect, the platform that you wouldn't need a man or a boom lift for. Like you just walk up these stairs and you extend it up and then boom, you can work on all the QDs and the clamps and the pipe work underneath the launch mount. I don't get why they haven't done that, but you know, like I said, I'm not a project manager. There's a, I don't know if there's that much space under there. It'd be uh, pretty tough to get it all hooked up, but uh, no, it seems like that'd be a real comfortable way of doing it. They do seem to love their boom lift parties though. So here we are looking at a uh, booster four and ship 20. First candidates that could go orbital. I actually have a really good, we have some uh, panoramic shots that I wanted to show of booster four. Oof. Let's start uh, from the bottom. Actually, yeah, started from the bottom. Now we're here. All right. So. Looking from the bottom up, this is an amazing shot. You guys can see all of the clamps on the bottom. You can see all of the uh, arrow covers, arrow the covers for, for the engines. Uh, where's 420? There must be on the back side right now. Uh, you can see the current condition of these engine bells. We all know what they look like when they came in, nice and green. They're, uh, they're ink canal. They've. You uh, can see it. Look at the green. You can see the green behind the rest. Do I rust. am not worried at all about that rust that is just on the ink canal on the nozzle. And uh, as soon as they static fire these or or long term fire them, uh, all that rust will ablate away rather quickly. I think I'm not worried either, but for a different reason. And the reason I'm not worried is because I don't think they're going to fly this. So I don't know. There is plenty more to be concerned about under the skirt. Uh, just all the small piping, uh, sand, water, uh, biologic intrusion with birds and bees and such. So yeah, there, there's plenty to worry about. You know, you get a couple of, of nesting birds putting twigs inside of the inlet. Well, it's you know not a good day for that raptor. Yeah, I think. Uh, so Michelle was asking who the woman speaking is. That would be the lovely Miss Indian Star. Her. Um, her Twitter information is on the bottom right down there at Indian Star. Um, Indian Star, you still with us? Mm hmm. Right here. Yeah. So it looks like Michelle was maybe trying to get in contact with you. So if you wanted to message her, follow her on Twitter and, uh, and, and send her a message. It looks, seems like you're, I don't know if you were able to send what you were trying to before, but, you know, we'll be able to help you out if you just pop on over in a DM. Um, and somebody says, just cause you say that Zach doesn't make it true. I agree. Yeah. So does, uh, you know, most of the stuff is speculation. A lot of us really do want to see this, these booster, this booster fly, but, uh, you know, everything's up in the air with SpaceX. A lot of us wanted to see SN 15 fly again. A lot of us, uh, wanted to see SN 16 fly. We wanted uh, right to see... here. There's a few details. We really did want to see uh, the reflight. So uh, to the far left, that pipe ending there is the autogenous repressurization line for the oxygen. They've got the oxygen tank on the bottom on the booster. Methane up top. Methane is much less dense, less heavy. So, uh, And the other pipe is the pressurization line that goes all the way up to the methane. Now... Right at the, uh, those two arrow covers to the left are covering the oxygen vents. Uh, is that correct, uh, Zach? At whenever These they're releasing, right yeah, when they're releasing the oxygen, it, uh, 
think we called it the uh, bull snort, where it just uh, shoots out through there. <laughs> yeah, I see. I on booster um, seven, I believe there's actually another one in the middle, so it has three three vents, and uh, actually there's six because there's I believe three on the back side as well too, which would only make sense. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that they made that addition. I was uh, talking with. Um, Marcus House about this briefly, and we were kind of just thinking about why they would need that. And the only thing I can think of is, um, just with how fast you're potentially dumping this uh, autogenous um, gas back into here, they may need just more uh, volumetric capacity in, in terms of like purging the tanks, not purging, but venting the tanks. Um, and also would be interesting with them. Oops using these um as part of the um what's the word for it uh well uh, so when the, they do the eulage thruster uh, yes exactly cold, yeah cold gas so with these being at angles right here this is at an angle and then the one in the middle would be straight they could perform all kinds of rolls and uh backflips theoretically um i don't know if it's too high up in order to do that it'd be weird um yeah, but that, yeah that would be an odd place to do it but uh you know with enough pressure you could do it but this seems like the wrong lever arm like you would you would think you would put it right at the top or right at the bottom and that's not how they're doing this yeah um let's see uh oh oh yeah <laughs> this was the uh I forgot I was still in the panel and I tried to go to the next image of it. So wait, I thought for a minute that you were pranking us and that it just kept going and going. Computer crashed. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to get back to the full screen. One of these days. Sorry, guys. Okay. And now it's corrupted. <laughs> well, that was a fail. I think your image file was just too large for us, Mauricio. Uh, I can try again later. I think we we actually do have one of, of Ship 20, but because those files are so large, I may um, I may try at the end of the stream instead of going through them right now, because uh, there's a few other things I wanted to get through, and I just wanted to... Oh, here we go. Uh, this is actually the QD that connects to the Starship. Um, that actually like, connects from the tower, right? Or it's part of the same tower system? Yes. So, so this is basically what they what they would use to do the the cryo test from this location. And you can actually see. Oh, it's hard from this angle to be sure, but I think this is the line that they were purging out of yesterday. Um, I can show. It looks it looks different from the aerial. Uh, this may actually be the one that was running to the uh, TSC-4 test tank, and there might be another line behind it in between the Ship 20 and, and this line. But uh, yeah, they weren't they weren't venting out of the ship. They were venting out of the line that would connect to the ship. So all of these pre-pressurization lines and the actual fueling lines aren't actually connected to anything right now. They're just waiting to be connected. So they purged out the entire line. And I would not be surprised if they've started connecting them. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see once we get some good. You know what? Maybe maybe Jessica Kirsch will get us a good good close up uh, before the weekend's over, and we'll we'll see if they've changed anything. Hi, right, Jessica. You heard that? You've got your homework. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> uh, you know, now might be a good time. Have uh, any questions come up, uh, Indian Star, from the chat that uh, cover Starship or uh, the booster? Mm -hmm. There are a couple, but they weren't. Uh, yeah, let me they, that. I'll let you pick the best one. We'll we'll answer it. It's been a minute since we answered questions. Well, there's a question about uh, Oscar's asking, "Can you show the weird palettes on the previous pick, Zach?" So I think that was a few yeah. times ago. Yeah, I think I think we did that. I I, th I don't know if I I didn't see his response on whether or not I was showing the right one, but I think I haven't seen him yell at me, so I think maybe we did. And so if Marcus, anyone would like to ask a question, just do exclamation point question and then type whatever you'd like to ask. But don't put a comma afterwards, otherwise I won't see it. 
So no punctuation, just a space after question, please. So it's exclamation point, question, space, and then you can ask your question. And so there's another question Mark asks, when do you think phase two of the launch site will start? As in tower two of fuel farm two? I think after they have completely proven that uh, this this version works, that they'll start laying the groundwork, uh, like pilings and, and items that they know they're going to need. But following that, they may pause until they have confirmation that stage zero is where they want it. That way they can make any changes and pivot towards a, a, more, a different solution if there's a failure here. I don't think there will be a failure, so I'm sure they'll, they're will they preparing now. And uh, really, sta you know, stage two is, uh, or, or you know, iteration two is already beginning just in the back offices and in the supply chain. It'll, it'll happen, and it'll happen probably much more rapidly. And we really might see test and, or um, the Tower 2 is down at the Cape, and it might not be, uh, it might be Tower 3 here down at Boca Chica is the next one we see down here. Nice, thank you. Mike Crow was asking, uh, <laughs> that's a great name. <laughs> what are the plus Y symbols on so many structures at Starbase for? Ah, so, uh, and this is actually a great picture to explain it. So there are three axes that, that have to be aligned throughout uh, the Starship, the booster, and the tower, and they're all related. There's X, which is the left and right, Y, which is the backwards and forwards, and Z, which is the up and down. So mm -hmm. as you go around, or did I get that right, Zach? You normally would be right, but I think their x-axis is actually up the booster in this case, and the z-axis is pointed out, uh, pointed horizontal. X and right. y. I, are... I have seen z on the uh, on the uh, launch uh, orbital launch table they had for a long time. Z plus right there. Yeah, you rarely see x's. There, there's a bunch of y's and z's around. So Z and Y, and then X runs up. But uh, yeah, so it's just uh, coordinating uh, where the booster is going to be in relationship to the to the launch table and in relationship to the tower. Everybody has the same reference. It's just a coordinate plane to have. Right on. Uh, there was a question from Mark as well. Will there be another large tent? Um, I think a lot of people have covered that in their YouTube videos. Felix actually, uh, and for Felix from What About It did a really good video on that, so I won't go into it too much because he clearly knows way more than we do about it. Um, Marcus House mentioned it as well today as well. So if you if you want to check that out, um, I would I would do that. It's you know they they do have a few. I think there's a large building that they they disassembled over there recently, so it looks like they're clearing space for something like that. But um, whether it's replacing all the tents or if it's just a fourth tent, um, it's kind of hard to to really tell. Oh, this is go. my favorite stuff we're getting into. Ah, uh, stage C room. So uh, everyone new who's joining or coming back, please be sure to hit that like button. We're almost there. We almost have as many likes as viewers. So I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but uh, I want to. Spoilsport Spoil Spoil gets sad when I don't talk about the things that he likes. So uh, one of the things that people <laughs> mentioned this week, which actually has been here for a while, is this crack that goes across the bottom of the launch tower, and. Uh, this one, I don't think is one to be worried about. Actually, either of them, I don't think they're to be worried about. These are kind of normal. Um, if it were, if it was a new crack where it happened uh, while the chopsticks were under load testing, I think that would be a pretty major issue. However, uh, I took a picture of standing from this exact location back in October, and this crack was here as well um, then. However, down here, it appears that there's another one right at the base. Um, just a in my opinion, a normal like stress fracture. But I mean, the thing to consider is there's a massive amount of rebar inside of here. So I don't think that really holds it all together. Yeah, um, I don't yeah, know if I'll, it makes a difference. Also, you, you have plenty of options for, uh, you know, sealing that uh, 
pumping concrete under it to, to reinforce it. I mean, it has pilings underneath it already, I'm sure. So uh, I'll, I'll call upon our resident expert, uh, Phil Kid, later to, uh, to give us his analysis. But uh, I think we're okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to think of, I thought there was another thing I saw down here earlier. Uh, if anyone wants to Photoshop a, a leaning tower of Boca Chica, please do. Oh, I think um, after the rain, Rover Cam is easily able to do that. It usually gets, uh, yeah. the water gets up underneath the tires and kind of makes it sink down Settle. a little bit. And then it, yeah. It settles a little bit. Shout out to Lab for constantly going out there to adjust that because the moment that it's the slightest, like if, it, if Rover Cam looked like this right now, he would probably be getting emails saying, hey, why? Fix it. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's not that easy to get out there. And especially when you have, uh, you know, when it's raining and the water is like running down the beach, it'll get up, uh, go along the tires and actually can cause it to like sink down. So you'll uh, you'll you'll see it start to tilt sometimes. And he actually has to go out there to, to fix that. And I'm glad that he always is able to do that for you guys. And, uh, you know, even though to me, not a huge deal, I just turn my screen. I tilt it to the side because I have a, you know, rotating mount. That's how I get so around it. Sir, I know that you're the first one to text him every day to tell him it's tilted. Don't lie. <laughs> no, I, I I text him about Raptor Roost Cam because lately um, with the weather, it's been having a few issues and, you know, I, that's my favorite. Cam I know. Well. Sh shout out to the Raptor Roost Cam. We, we never used to watch it. Now it's one of my favorite to watch. Yeah. And shout out to Lab for always being up in the mornings right when it freezes to unfreeze it. So uh, quick, quick reaction time with Lab. It, it's a... Awesome, just seeing the way that he cares about his channel and, uh, you know, is constantly trying to trying to keep everything improving. And if you guys haven't seen his 180, um, 180 degree launch pad cam, it's amazing. So uh, mm. make sure you check that out. I believe you have to, it might be members only, but I'm not sure. Uh, so Mar Mauricio, uh, while we're on the topic, are you, uh, so how do you feel about the uh the spacex photographer community down in uh down in uh brownsville and uh, boca chica y'all uh are y'all all one big happy family well i think it's um i think it takes up a lot of work uh, for all the photographers that are out there it's it's not just it's not too as easy as it sounds to go out there and photograph but i appreciate everybody we we recently started a uh, Twitter space, and I think we had Nick, we had Cooper Heim, Cosmic Perspective, and uh, Kevin from What About It, and I think I'm missing somebody else, Austin, uh, not Austin, but not Oh, Austin. yeah. Uh, um, Austin D. D. Santia. And we basically... No, I, yeah, I was able Austin to DeSisto. Right, yeah, it was Austin. So we, we yeah. do just talk about the, you know, what goes into photography and, you know, pretty much just storytelling about what our mission is, why we're doing this and so forth. So if you guys are interested, you know, we'll be doing, I haven't really gotten together with them on when we're exactly going to do the next one, but I will put out a reminder out at, on Twitter so you guys can join us when that happens. I got to join for, for a bit on that one. And wow, what a, what a star set of cast you had that day. I can't believe you, you pulled in that many folks and, uh, Man, I look forward to having a few of those on uh, on this stream as a uh, guest one of these days. Yes, of course. Um, right, just get to know the photographers. It's not, you know, the, everybody has a story behind why they're doing this. I think it's important to tell that story as well. I think everybody just focuses on the photos and, you know, they don't really see what goes into taking these photos, especially for like someone like Cosmic Perspective. They, they put out pretty amazing stuff. Um, if you haven't checked out their channel, you should, you know, be amazed. Um, you know, I really, I really enjoyed watching that, uh, listening to that Twitter space. Are you planning on maybe turning it into a podcast or? I don't know. I would have to talk to the, to everybody that's involved. Everybody's, you know, game, everybody has to be available for this type of stuff. And it's, it's a lot of folks involved in this so i think we'll just keep it at twitter space for now and you know see see where it goes take it one step at a time yeah 
I mean, it's all we can do one step at a time. We're, uh, we got a lot of, lot of fun things coming up. I think I saw somebody ask if we were going to host a live stream party for the first Orbital launch. Um, I'm going to say no, but I think that whatever we end up doing will probably far exceed whatever you're expecting us to do. Let's just say that. Um, one thing I wanted to point out about this picture, I think I've touched on it before, but I really love this part of the launch mount, um, so I like to mention it, is that this is more than likely related to the Raptor Chill. Um, so these are flame arresters, which uh, once, the, once they switch over from Raptor Chill to um, and during the ignition process, they may have um, gaseous methane mixed in with it, which obviously could ignite inside of the pipes. And so these flame arresters will stop that flame from traveling all the way back to the tank farm. Um, so that that's this is like a very important feature of the launch mount. And I uh, also want to point out, it could very well not be for what I'm saying it's for, but that's the only thing that really makes sense. So if uh, anybody comes up with a better explanation, feel free to send me a DM and let me know. Um, oh, looks like Max Q was going to get a photo showing the direction of travel. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of just up through here and it splits uh, and meets back up in the middle. So basically you're slowing your flow down through each of these, um, each of these flame resters because it's going to be very high through here, and then you're, it's like, you know, parallel, um, parallel resistors, essentially. So you're gonna be slowing your flow down through each of these, and then they'll recombine at higher, higher velocity back in, in this pipe. Um, yeah, so let's see. Oof. I do love the parallels between hydraulics and electronics with resistors, and, you know, you can almost do the same programming in hydraulics as you can. I had a good like picture China. for uh, Stephanie Ball was asking for a picture last week, and I think it's coming up here soon. Yeah, we're almost there. Oh, this is really cool as well. Um, so we've kind of showed this in the past, but these are the air quote uh, flame diverters on the launch mount. They're on the inside leg. Um, this is this is. About all the diversion that we got down here, guys. Going to be interesting. And the Chicago sun is coming through my window. It's getting hard for me to see the screen. I may have to close some blinds here in a little bit. Um, and I'm skipping through these because I really want to get to this one shot. Let's see here. Oh, so uh, one, one important thing. They started uh, painting over the welds on the water tank. So that's a little bit oh, of crow for me. I w yeah, I was really hoping they were going to put some uh, um, uh, bands around the outside of this in order to give it a little bit more structural stability when it's holding as much water as they theoretically could put in here. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Not, I don't know it. how it's going to work out with me either. The, uh, yeah, that's a risky move, Cotton. Somebody knows something I don't know. That's all I that's all I can come up with. Um. One thing that I also noticed down here is the fact that this part of the liquid oxygen main supply line is still uninsulated. And we have seen them do more purge testing on the tower, so maybe they're leaving this until they finish the testing on the tower. However, one other option, theoretically, super crow on this one, um, they could uh, it would require them to remove the, um, actually, I'm not sure. They may have to move, um, switch the shells in order to make this happen. But theoretically, they could bridge liquid oxygen over here. And they could also um, put three, have there be a three, sorry, let's say we're looking at this from the front. You would have liquid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, and what was supposed to be the methane. Um, they could go nitrogen 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 and then locks 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 which uh, if they're not never able to put um if they're never able methane. to put methane in these in this tank that's what i would do is find another way find a way to bridge another locks tank in here and also i think i, I, think I might another... stay 
Nitrogen, 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 water, nitrogen, and then locks against the back. Is this is the back side. Oh, that's the back side. Yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. These are the three locks, locks, locks. Um, so uh, the the ultimate best way, in my opinion, would be to take the nitrogen tank that's in the front over here, and then you have four locks tanks, so, um, all in a group. And then you'd have one, two, three nitrogen tanks in the back which would make the most sense because then your nitrogen would be in between uh, creating a barrier in between your um, methane and your oxidizer. And uh, you know what? I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm really happy that this is not a methane tank because it really bothered me that there was methane tanks in front in the on this side instead of them being on the road side and having the other tanks as a shield. Like, I don't get why you would want something this tall full of methane to be able to be impacted or punctured um, during a rud. So yeah, uh, I'm glad they're will, not going to be using it for that. I will say to, to keep it in perspective that um, Starship 10 was on site and nearby. Whenever Starship 9 landed, violently exploded and sent shrapnel flying at, at Starship 10. And, uh, you know, it survived and the uh everything uh these tanks have a steel shell they're then filled with perlite and then there's another steel shell and then the the methane so it would take a very very powerful uh, explosion to uh to damage that now the pipes may be damaged on the outside so there would have to be something to stop the flow of methane out but i think these things are pretty tough so uh, you know, it might not have been a terrible idea, but uh, that said, if they built it the wrong way and it could never be qualified, it doesn't matter how good a, of an idea it is, if nobody will ever be able to load propellant into it. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to see what they'll they'll do here. Uh, I noticed a comment uh, somebody made that actually made a lot of sense. Um, who was that? It was Raven Nightwing saying maybe the bands are on the inside. Uh, that is a very good possibility because we saw them cut holes into this in multiple locations where they were able to access the inside of the water tank. And uh, I actually haven't seen them. Maybe Jessica Kirsch would be able to tell us if they've actually offloaded water into this. I haven't seen them offload water into this thing for a very long time, so it might be empty. And there is a possibility that there was actually scaffolding set up all the way on the inside of this thing in order for them to weld on the inside of the tank uh personally think that those bands are better suited on the outside of the tank but um i don't know they do it on the starship they put the they put them on the inside so there's no reason that they can't do them here as well too uh, but until grandpa joe was able to get inside that tank we're not gonna know it'd really be a mole then you got any connections that can get you inside that tank grandpa joe uh, I just know this one guy named Mauricio who's been in one once or twice. <laughs> he's been inside of a tank? I don't know. He's been inside of a Mark One. I just noticed a few things about this that are a little bit different. But I can't fully see what it is, so I just won't. I think there's a lot of conduit that I've never noticed before somehow. So uh, for anybody looking at these uh, that have, hasn't seen them before, these are kettle reboilers. They pump liquid oxygen or, uh, in one side, and then they pump liquid uh, nitrogen uh, through the main body there, and that super chills the, uh, the oxygen. Uh, oxygen freezes at negative 178, and the liquid nitrogen further, uh, as it evaporates, removes heat from the oxygen. And then that super condenses it. The reason yeah. that's important is it provides additional cooling uh, for the rocket nozzles, and it, but more importantly, it densifies the liquid oxygen to the point where you can load much more propellant into the tanks. Uh, you know, one one seventy eight liquid oxygen is at at one density, and and further down it gets more dense. Uh, with methane, the same happens, but you have to be careful not to get it too cold because it will freeze and become methane ice. Um, and yeah, you run into problems with that. I saw somebody say reed chillers, not reed boilers. Uh, I don't know. We've looked this up a few times. It, from what we can see, the actual name for these are kettle reboilers. boilers. Um, 
we call them hippos because they, that's what they look like. Uh, but just to kind of expand <laughs> on what Grandpa Joe was saying, um, one of the first operations that you're going to see when they start up the tank farm is these start to slowly get frosty. And so basically coming up through the bottom is going to be nitrogen that's filling up. Um, let's just consider it almost like a bathtub. So it, it'll fill it up right to about here. And while it's filling it up, you'll start to see uh, nitrogen purge out of the back of these slowly. And the moment they start loading fuel, uh, you'll, which is basically when the liquid oxygen in this case goes all the way up and down through the top, and then it cycles through um, the inside um, with the tubes, and then it comes out the bottom. And when it comes out the bottom, the molecules are a lot sm uh, smaller than when they went in, like Grandpa Joe was explaining. But the moment that this uh, heat transfer starts to happen, it's very obvious because the amount of nitrogen pouring out of these increases dramatically because you're you're boiling it off as you're cooling um, the the liquid oxygen. So I think that this tank farm will be way easier to determine what stage in the launch they are or in a, in a launch countdown than it is on the suborbital pads. There'll be a lot more signs of exactly what's happening. Um, another thing that'll be super obvious is detanks. You can actually see the detank when it hits the tank farm. It'll it um, it flies through the tank farm, and as it's traveling, you'll see the um, vapor coming off the pipe. So you'll see it like just hit the tank farm super hard, and there's just vapor coming all the way here back through the front, and then it boom it it'll come out the it comes out the vent on the top of this tank on the front side. Yeah, it's really cool to watch. Uh, uh, somebody uh, asked, uh, is the liquid nitrogen colder than the liquid oxygen? And uh, they are right about the same, if memory serves, but the main action that cools the liquid oxygen is actually the evaporation. As a liquid turns into a gas, it removes, it's, a, it's an endothermic reaction, and it takes heat out of the environment. That physical change requires heat, and that heat is stolen from the oxygen. So it's, it's actually the act of cryogenic evaporation that removes the heat. Yeah, and, and your your liquid nitrogen is going to be colder than pretty much everything. I mean, you can use, if I'm, I may be wrong on this one, I think you can use um, liquid nitrogen in order to create liquid oxygen. Um, but the, the thing is that, you know, you, you could transport liquid oxygen at that low temperature that uh, the liquid nitrogen is naturally at, but instead you could you could just keep it a little bit over its boiling temp as you're storing it and then wait until you're about to load it in order to uh, drop that temperature and the methane side, you're going to be dropping that one even more. So in my opinion, there should be way more venting out of the methane side and the liquid oxygen side and uh, potentially the process of running methane through here may be slower than liquid oxygen because you're, you have, you're trying to lower the temperature more. You're at more of a delta delta T than uh, than you have on the lock side. So it may have to spend longer in there, or they just pump it at a lower rate. Um, but they also are installing two more uh, methane pumps uh, currently, and hopefully they're installing two more heat exchangers as well too. So you know they, they could potentially rapidly pick up their uh, their methane pumping capability here soon. So Keith Tay has a question. He's wondering how far those methane tanks are from high from the highway. He says maybe the photography makes them look closer than they really are. They're like forty feet from the highway. Yeah, they're not that far, and e even more, they have parking right next to them, and uh, it's right next to the parking. The they're tank, close enough. Tanker parking. That Aaron Rodgers could probably throw a football over the top of all of them. Never mind. You know, I take that back. Whoever the the punter is for the Cowboys. He could probably kick it over the top of. Well, if he's a cowboy, those. probably not. Sorry. Isn't he the one that hit the top of the? He hit the um, the top of the stadium when he punted the ball. Yeah, I think that was. That would be a spoil sport question. Don't know. <laughs> uh, there are some more questions about what you're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. There was a question about, and I know we've answered this in the past. Are we hundred percent sure there are problems? Uh, with the vertical CH4 tanks, or is it still speculation? 
John, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna highly recommend that uh, anybody super interested in that question watch episode one and two of the RGB aerial flyover review. We we have spent quite a few hours on that. Um, we're we're not 100% metaphysically sure that they'll never use it, but uh, yeah, uh, we are fairly certain that it's not likely they're going to be able to use that in their their current. Uh, it does not comply with the rules. And thus, nobody could certify it to hold methane. So as it stands now, the answer is no. It, it cannot legally hold uh, cryogenic uh, methane. Uh, that said, laws can be changed or ignored, but uh, I, I doubt we're going to see that right now. Uh, what does look possible, and I'll try to say very brief on this, is <laughs> that they are clearing out the berm and they're laying the foundations for two more uh, commercial uh, off-the-shelf CH4 containers. And that will, those um, those two plus the two that already exist will be enough to supply a uh, Starship and a booster for a test flight. This is weird. I don't think I've ever noticed these here before. This must be what the scaffolding was attached to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one thing I wanted to point out Oh, I think she saw it. She was asking about the cable chain last week. This is the cable chain that all of the hydraulics and comms and uh, electrical wires that attach to the carriage all come down to this cable chain. And you can see the little loop on the bottom. It uh, folds up so with it as the tower the, as it goes up the tower. Moves with the tower. We have the two-inch uh, cables that tension it just to the top left. Oh, uh, this one. Oh, you mean for the um, for the actual uh, the, uh, the cable? Yeah, for the main cable that lifts the uh, system. Chopsticks. So that that whole cable chain just rises with the uh, chopsticks as it goes. It just bends and folds and pulls right on up. Um, so just look at for this is the one thing about. Uh, when you when 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 we do these the day after uh, Mauricio takes pictures, we don't have time to go through them as much. So we're kind of like searching for stuff live. So uh, <laughs> we we might discover something at the same time y'all do. And hey, if y'all see something we should uh should highlight, please by all means uh, shout it out in the comments. I see Dave saying that those were used to hold the skates during install, which uh, pretty. I thought the ones that were holding the skates were mounted directly to the rails, but I could be wrong. Um, hey guys, um, real quick here. Just if anybody notices, there's really nobody standing on the orbit launch mount, or you don't really see anybody working up there. And there's a reason for all that. The winds were gusting at in excess of 30 miles an hour when I was out there. I know I was standing on top of the dunes and I almost fell over because there was a big gust of wind that almost made me fall. Yeah, that this is a uh, tough being out there. I mean, you're holding the camera and you're like eyes up to it and you kind of lose your sense of balance when you're when you're when you're doing that. Um, you know, funny story, I actually did something similar the other day. I was <laughs> sitting in the living room on my hoverboard. And I had the binoculars up to my eyes because I was looking at the traffic. I, I like to watch, wake up in the mornings and watch traffic because it makes me, I don't know why. It's like, a, it's like a sick, sick enjoyment that I get because I work from home and I see people wasting their life in traffic. I just sometimes take my binoculars out to try and figure out what's, <laughs> what's, what's making them have to sit there for so long. And you know, I'm sitting there on my hoverboard, like trying to balance as I have the binoculars to my eyes. And this gust of wind came through the window and like blew me backwards. And I, I flipped all the way over the couch. Luckily, I landed like on my feet somehow, but uh, yeah, that could have been bad. Luckily, I don't have any like glass tables or anything else. We might have lost a GB, but uh, yeah, we're still alive. Um, <laughs> one thing I want to point out that they've been doing this week over the last few weeks is, is shaving these down. Um, you can kind of see the way that where, where they've been polishing. Um, they've been doing it pretty much all the way up the tower and uh, It'll be interesting to see how long that continues. I don't know if we maybe get a good shot of it coming up here soon. 
I think they're just uh, fine tuning it, or uh, did they discover some some problem, or was this always planned? You know, so one of the things that I noticed this week was that the uh, water bags that were used to do the the water sacks that were used for the uh, testing of the chopsticks actually arrived back on location. So I'm wondering if they had to make some adjustments to these in order to allow it to travel with a little bit less friction or something like that. Um, and I mean, because we did see we did see tracks as it was going up which could mean, I don't know, it could mean a, a number of things, but with the amount of work that they're doing on here, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them do another water sack test before they actually put a booster on there, but we'll see. So um, that giant wheel right there, I, I know I've seen it before, but uh, what, what does that go to? Yeah, so the draw works at the bottom of the tower. This is the four inch cable that comes up and goes around, and then it comes up right here. You can almost see the other one. Oh, okay. And you could just make out the cable. So that takes it from the outside of the tower to the inside, to the inside. of the tower. Mm -hmm. Ah. Um, also notice these pipes right here that are uninsulated. Also showing that the tower has not been even started to be tested. That's like so the how, thing I'm looking most excited, forward to. Yeah. How excited are you going to be whenever all that's covered? Uh, the moment I see them start purging out of... Where is it? This right here. So there's actually a pipe that enters into the tower. I think it comes all the way back up to here and it connects to, uh, I'm not sure which cryo line it connects to. I think this one comes up through the floor and it connects to that. So they'll actually, when they do their first testing on the tower, it'll be super obvious because they'll be purging out of the side of the tower. So Nerdle Cam will have a great view of it because it'll just be spraying out the side of the table just like it did on the launch mount. Uh, but it's going to be a lot more exciting, in my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if they do it for way longer and also higher volume just because of the fact that it's not near the ground. So they don't have to worry about like, um, I don't know, just, just all the all the risks that come with releasing that much nitrogen near the ground. I think they'll, they'll be able to do the test a lot faster and with more force up here when they blow mm -hmm. it out. Uh, I'm, I'm so, so excited for that. I'm hoping that it happens next week, but. We'll see. So Zach, there's a few uh, more things that have to happen first. Uh, I see a competitor in the uh, chat. Gigi says rockets are under FAA rules, uh, not under Texas Railroad Board because they're not fixed tanks. Do you think that uh, has any opportunity to change our answer if uh, they'll ever be able to use the methane tanks? Um, I think he's talking about just the vehicle itself, not the actual yeah. GSE tanks. So, I mean, yeah, he's right, I guess. I'd have to see where, what his uh, initial comment that he was responding to is. But yeah, um, sounds about right. Oh, wow, dude. I just realized I made it through this whole episode without like slipping into any accents on accident. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm, proud of, I'm like I'm going up as we speak. Uh, this is really cool. I don't know if a lot of people have seen this, um, but these platforms right here are similar to the ones that they use to clean your... Well, my windows, I guess, <laughs> since I live in a uh, a tower. Um, these are basically hanging platforms that allow them to slide up and down. Um, I don't get why they didn't use this the entire time. Again, like you could have had multiples of these all up and down the tower. I mm -hmm. don't get why this is the first time we're seeing them. But uh, yeah, shout out to Sky Climber. That's way better than a scaffold. Yeah, also better late than never, I suppose. Um, disconnect. So what wow, are those first. two little white triangles? Is that a, just a little bumper for whenever it hits the starship? Yeah, this is a, this basically allows it to, um, to rest up against the starship. And the thing about, the other thing to notice about this is the way that this hose curls up like this. Um, so when... When this moves out, uh, this entire structure, actually, I'm not 100% sure. I believe the actual QD that's behind it comes out with it. And if it doesn't, then it probably comes up separately, which is why these are looped like this so that they can extend out. Just my opinion. Um, I haven't actually seen it happen yet, but that's the only thing I can make sense of why it still looks like this. Um, this is also interesting to me. It looks like a 
Uh, wow. By the way, Dave Avery had a great answer to why they just started with the uh, the sky lifts, uh, and it's because it was a, a late delivery in the supply chain. Uh, they must need a better supply chain manager. I'm not going to work for SpaceX, Dave. <laughs> nice try. Um, so, continuing up the tower. If anybody from SpaceX is listening, I will work for SpaceX. Just give me a call. Twitter handles down below. Yeah, you can also call me so I can forward it to GPJ. Um, so, <laughs> we, it's kind of funny that they still haven't really made too much, many moves up here as far as continuing with the roof. Seems like they're just trying to protect these. But uh, they, they have gotten they tired of getting backside. rained on right there. <laughs> yeah, and the tough part about this is they don't have their crane isn't configured to reach this high right now. So they probably have to bring all those panels up through the elevator and then carry them up a ladder and then uh, place them up there. So that kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, we've I wouldn't seen be guys doing. Well. Uh, yeah, we've seen guys up there doing uh, pull up competitions. So we know they've got some strong guys. They're they're more than ready to to carry that up the last mile. Yeah, would they like to hang off this this rail back here and do pull ups in front of rover cam? Uh, trying to help get our female viewer count up, I guess. Um, uh, hey, we have seen uh, Austin Bernard has, uh, is finally able to do a muscle up. So uh, congrats to him. Full has he done one on the tower yet? Uh, I don't know, but I can't wait to see it. <laughs> they don't have a lot of tiles to be installed up there on the top of the tower. So might have to wait. All right, chopstick arms. We've seen a lot of work happen uh, down in this area. You can see the cameras. The, yeah, the cameras that this is the little pin that goes into the uh, load point on the booster in order to stabilize it. And you can see they have three cameras looking at it to make sure that it's in there. Definitely don't want that to slip. Um, that's going to be an amazing view. You can see the backside, the way that those are mounted onto these. Uh, uh, I want to call them jigs, but they're not jigs. I wouldn't be surprised if they do something to protect this more too, like a shield over the entire thing, because uh, you're going to have a <laughs> booster sliding by here uh, with engines igniting and potentially firing out into other directions in order to stabilize itself. So it'll be interesting to see how they try and protect those things. I guess they will be folded up out of the way while the booster is coming in, now that I think about it. Um, so maybe they don't need protection. I'm all about covering everything up. Like if they put paneling over this entire outside of this, that would be absolutely amazing. Just cover yeah. the entire thing up. Don't forget every every inch of cable, electric, uh, every bit of rubber on that device is going to be hit with not only the the sound and pressure, but heat. Uh, so any any spare cable you see laying around. It's going to be in, you know, right in the path of the fire. So all of that is, I'm sure it's a uh, fire certified. <laughs> so that brings us to another question. Stephen Lewis is asking, will they clad the tower before the static fire? Mm, that's I hope probably so. the, the, before the static fire or before the launch? Static fire. Static fire, they can get away without doing it. Uh, they, they will probably start cladding it as soon as they're done. Uh, certifying the tower, but uh, I don't think cladding is going to take very long at all. It won't, but I mean, just to give you guys a view of why I think it's necessary, if you look at all this pipe work and all these large pieces of equipment that are inside the building, I mean, you have all your 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 cryo tubes in here as well. Uh, we've already seen them start to cover up the cryo tubes on the base of here. I don't think you want flames in, entering into the side of the tower, so. Especially with this flame diverter right here, it basically splits it up so it enters in the building like that. Um, yeah, I, I personally hope they put that cladding on there. I mean, you can see that they they have the uh, brackets to mount it onto. They just need to finish their testing. Probably need to get rid of all these temporary cables that are hanging around. And uh, you know, once once they're able to do all that, once all their testing is done, they'll be able to actually enclose it. Um, so I hope we I hope we see that soon. Yeah. And, and I mean, these things are huge, but the uh, distance between the launch table and the tower is only what, like 20 meters? Yeah. Uh, 
maybe 30 or 40 actually or to the center i'm thinking to the center um, and, uh, i mean edge to edge center to center is probably uh 40. see this is one of those things i'm excited to see them put a cover on this because like conduit like this on the side can't have that <laughs> go, go on in a heartbeat can't have that can't wait to see what this ends up looking like Okay, so now we're getting to some questions people are asking about. And I'm glad I remembered that. Or, well, I didn't remember it. It just popped in front of here because uh, we we actually were, we actually may have to end our stream a little early today just because, uh, well, it's been a long week. We did one earlier on Wednesday and uh, kind of have families to attend to and whatnot. So um, we want to we wanna make sure that all of our production staff and everybody's able to enjoy their Saturday since we kind of took their Wednesdays away. Um, but yeah, this is something that people have been asking about. One thing that happened here this week, this elbow actually used to come around the other way and this used to come down out and around and then back. And now they switched it so that it drops down this way. And you'll notice that the joints that they welded are still bare. Um, that's pretty typical when they still haven't tested anything, but this also could allow them to tap, uh, put a T joint right here so that they can essentially do the same thing they did right here, which is um, connect potentially one to two more uh, methane tanks once they're, once they're in this position. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. And Matter for fact, those this could be the yeah. second lo location where they tap off of right here, theoretically. Um, mm, probably not. but. Yeah, there's, there's, we're definitely going to see something. Like I said, it could just be a parking lot, but uh, pretty sure those tanks are going to go here. And I think a lot of us would like to see that happen as well, too. They got some formwork ready for the massive wall that they're going to have to build. Yep, they have to uh, lay down the foundation if they're going to uh, put the tanks on top of it. Can't just throw it on the sand. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't want to like, be the bearer of bad news. I mean, I've heard people say that, oh, this could be done in 30 days. I highly doubt that. The amount yeah, of work it, that needs to happen here in the next 30 days, I highly, highly doubt that. So John T asks, are they moving the methane tanks or building new ones? They ordered, they have new tanks that arrived like a month ago and they, they're they waiting uh, for a new home and this is where we think they're going to go. Um, but to and, explain I'm, a little bit uh, more, uh, to the left, that white tank is a methane tank. Uh, originally, the uh, stand-up 9-meter surrounded by perlite, surrounded by 12-meter uh, tanks in the orbital launch fuel farm, uh, those were supposed to be methane, but now we believe strongly that these uh, horizontal tanks that are commercial, off-the-shelf uh, tanks are these are going to be used and they have to be, you know, on top of concrete, surrounded by a concrete wall of a certain height, have a certain inlet and outlet. And this all matches up with code. So it looks like this will be the initial methane farm. They're just going to double it here. Yeah. I, you know, I, I saw a question here. Um, all the things they have to do before launch, when do you estimate they will launch the first stack? I'm going to play the fifth. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, April 20th. <laughs> that actually seems far more likely than pretty much anything else I've heard so far. I like it. April 20th. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's honestly being a little optimistic, but uh, I've seen Agreed. people at SpaceX be way more optimistic than I am. So when do yeah. you think the methane tanks will be delivered to the tank farm? Philip Knox is asking. Um, yeah, I mean they gotta they gotta build up this base first, so it'll probably be one to two weeks. You want to let it um, cure a little bit too, since it's gonna be a rather thick concrete pad. Um, yeah, you know what, Zach? I want to I want to hear everybody's prediction on the launch. When, when does everybody think that uh, we're gonna see the uh, first orbital launch attempt? Uh, Post it in chat. We'll we'll see uh, what time wins out. I'm going with halfway through May. Halfway through 
halfway through May. I think that's uh, that's pretty doable. And what's uh, what's funny is we were thinking, oh, August is uh, August at the earliest of 2021. And here we are. August 2022 is still looking like it's on the table. This view, you can see the way that uh, these window, these sky, what are they called? Sky crawlers are attached to the edge of the tower. Oh, man, those windows are really clean. Windows? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, window cleaning uh, vehicles with yeah. no windows to clean. So do you know why they haven't tested the two methane horizontal tanks that are already present there? Ayush is asking. Because uh, they're going to add more of them, I think. Yeah. They probably have done at least pressure testing on them. Um, highly doubt they put anything inside of them yet. But, I mean, well, first of all, these things most likely have to stay pressurized at all times anyways. I wouldn't be surprised if it was pressurized when they transported it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's in the requirements that they have to maintain pressure at all times. Um, kind of like a booster. But, uh, yeah, if you're going to have to take these lines apart and add two more tanks, kind of pointless to really test these until that's done. So that's why I don't, uh, for that reason, I also wouldn't be surprised if it takes forever for them to actually test the launch tower. Which would suck. Um, yeah, I, I really hope they start that launch tower testing soon. Um, I think we're kind of cycling back into... Mauricio leaving the leaving location. Uh, I'm going to see if I find anything that stands out a ton. So while you do that, there was a question from Mauricio. They were asking, Mauricio, do you have a tripod or something that you use when you do your ground photography? Or do you all take it by hand? That was Florida Sunshine asking. Uh, let's see. So everything's pretty much handheld, except for the shots of when I'm at the dunes, getting shots of the... That would be the east side of the launch site. That's the only time I use a, a tripod. But for the most part, I'm taking these from my truck. This particular time it was raining, so I, I didn't want to get off my truck. So I took these out, you know, looking out the window. Wow. Can't even tell, my friend. It looks like you're right there. And then if you guys agree with me, now's a good time to like this video or this conversation. It's a good time to donate, help make sure Mauricio has gas to show his ground photos, has gas to go flying, has all the things he needs to give us these amazing photos that we get to take part in and watch almost. I mean, Mauricio's done three this week. How amazing is that? I'm in uh, awe, we're, we're really spoiled. Um, Part of that is because I feel bad. I haven't done a flyover, so I just, you know, there's really nothing else I can do. Just go out there, get some ground shots and. <laughs> members happy well we appreciate the ground shots and i can only imagine the kind of twitches you're getting right now from not being in the air right i mean i just i did manage to i mean i don't really want i don't really like to say dates but i scheduled a flyover for tomorrow so oh so i can woohoo yes yeah the it all depends on the weather 100 percent depending on the weather and and I really hope it does. The weather forecast does not look too promising for tomorrow. But we'll just have to wait and see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And a couple of woohoos in the waiting. Let me know if you need me to look up at the sky for you. I'll uh, let you know what the weather's doing. Um, <laughs> uh, before, before we wrap this up, I wanted to point out one big thing, which is the rust on this rail right here. So this is the first time I've seen rust anywhere on the tower. And uh, this is a result of them shaving this down and it's not painted yet. So this is this is a really good evidence of the fact they've shaved down almost all of the railing going up, at least to the QD arm. Um, is that railing uh, stainless steel? No. Huh? No, if, if it was, then I don't think it would be doing what it's doing right now. It's... Uh, if if you heat if you heat up stainless steel and then uh you know let it oxidize then that oxidized iron can can rust just a little surface rust but uh that doesn't quite look like stainless steel to me 
No, yeah, it's whatever material the rest of the tower is made out of, which is, uh, I think we had a label of it one time. Um, I can't remember which. I believe it was like some high carbon steel, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Oh, yes. This is something I'm really <laughs> glad I forgot about. I, I, or I almost forgot about. So this is the liquid oxygen hose, the quick disc or no, the uh, flex hose. And this right here is the vent that they purge out of. If you guys happen to read the article I posted last night, you, cut, you would have seen this already. This is a uh, valve that they use to open up that purge line. And uh, this is interesting because th this is something I kind of talked about with uh, before about why I thought the booster may have been damaged because you can't, if you're purging, you're going to trap um, liquid up in here and you could theoretically push all the dirt up into that area. And the only way around that, in my opinion, is capping this and removing it and doing your purge that way. So I don't know, guys. Uh, I kind of feel like uh, there may be some weight in that theory that the booster is actually damaged, but it may not be for this reason, but you know, more evidence piling up sounds day by like day. A, sounds like a good reason to throw a coffee filter somewhere in the line. Yeah, I mean, once they connect this again, they should never, ideally never have to do it again, but... Uh, one thing I'm noticing is that, well, I can't, it looks like there's speed tape around the bottom of this. Uh, either way, the moment you take it off, you're introducing dirt to the inside of it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, pulling back, uh, I also noticed uh, this is a really good shot where you can see inside the wing of the uh, starship to the uh, far left there. I, I, I had an ex uh, yeah, this picture, but pull back a little bit. And to the left, there you go. Yep, you can see inside the wing of Starship 20. And, uh, yep, I uh, just hadn't seen it from that particular angle before. Right. And the tower's made of carbon steel. Thanks, Davery. Say, always the best. Yeah, yeah that's what I... That was my, my assumption. It, I mean, that's pretty standard that they... That's what they use for most of that stuff, so... Um, Man, this is disappointing. I don't like what I'm seeing back here just because the fact that this one isn't fully insulated yet. So, uh, Keep my speculation ask, myself. Uh, yeah, Chronic Tube asks, how much does a super heavy weigh when it's full? So it's about 180 metric tons um, <laughs> empty, and it holds 3,400 metric tons of fuel. So there you go. There's your answer. It's about... 3,400 uh, or 3,500 uh, metric tons, almost 36. Just making sure I... 3,000 tons. I thought it was more than that. Dave? Oh, I think we're on our way out. Oh, no, I'm back at the beginning, actually. Wow, we actually made it through all the pictures for once. That is wild. That was only the 28th. You missed uh, January 25th. Stop it. We already did those ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, with that being said, guys, I'm, I'm glad you guys stuck through it with us. There's 365 people still in here with us, one for every single day of the year. So thank every single one of you. Um, if you guys haven't liked this, make sure you do. Um, I'm not ending the stream. I'm just uh, <laughs> pointing that out that I'm glad you guys are all still here. We're at 429 likes. Thank you guys so much for uh for, for getting that number up. We really appreciate it. It helps us out with the YouTube alg algorithm, as I'm sure you guys know by now. Um, uh, and also thanks everybody who donated. That uh, definitely helps out Mauricio a lot, the way you know we we're trying to, trying to get him back up in the air, hopefully tomorrow if things work out, as he said. Um, so we'll see if that, that happens or not. Um, but again, you, know, you, guys do you guys donating makes it so that he's able to fly more often. Um, you know, it'd be lovely to see once the weather gets better, if, you know, who knows, maybe he'll, you know, be able to do twice a week, um, you know, if, with the proper amount of support, it's definitely possible. I think last year, um, on August 5th, uh, 6th, or sorry, 4th, 5th and 6th, he did three flyovers in a row in order to catch them lifting the, uh, doing the full stack on the launch tower. And, uh, 
while that wasn't the best thing as far as for his pockets, you know, it was something we all really appreciated. But one thing that we really noticed when he did that was that on all three of those days, there were very noticeable changes on both the launch site and the build site and Sanchez. So, uh, you know, there, in my opinion, it is worth doing two flyovers a week if, if, you know, weather permitted. So, you know, you guys, you guys donating definitely helps to make that a possibility in the future that that may actually happen. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we really appreciate you guys for, for all the support and for sharing this and talking to, uh, talking about it with your friends and whatnot. Um, super big shout out to Marcus house for mentioning this in his stream. We really appreciate that. That was amazing. Um, and everybody else who's, you know, retweeted and, uh, you know, shared this with their friends on Twitter. We, we always appreciate that as well too. Um, go team Marisa, space. yeah, go team space. Marisa, did you, did you have anything you wanted to add? Well, just to close this out here and I'll pass it on to Grandpa Joe and Andy story here next, but yes, I thank everybody, especially the viewers, the, I guess the production team as well. They, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you guys don't, don't know about. And, you know, Zach, you know, you're, you're bringing in the knowledge that you do. It's definitely not that easy to come up, you know, and, and come up with the, with this knowledge to be able to break everything down the way you do and Grandpa Joe as well. In the store, um, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate everybody on the back end. Um, Grandpa Joe, you, do you want to say anything? Uh, no, just, uh, thank you all for, uh, <laughs> for coming and watching and learning along with us. Uh, you know, every day is a learning experience and, uh, over to you, Indian star. I just want to thank you guys all for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Make sure you like this video if you did enjoy it. And, uh, if you can and have an extra dollar or two, be sure to donate it to RGP so we can all enjoy these photos over and over again every week and literally be a part of history as it's being made. Also, want to shout out to Astrogen. Happy birthday, Astrogen. Happy birthday, Jen. Yeah, happy birthday. And thank you for uh, helping us out with everything in the background as well, too. Um, if you guys don't know, Astrogen is a mod for uh, Starship Gazer on his Discord and I think on YouTube. So uh, actually, on that note, shout out to Starship Gazer. Hopefully, he's doing well. Um, if you guys uh didn't know he you know had surgery recently so we're hoping that he's able to get recovered and get back out on the streets of starbase to continue uh covering it the way he has um for the last year so uh you know big shout out to him if you guys are following him on twitter make sure you go and show some love over there and you know just let him know thinking about him and send some well wishes um yeah and you know to continue to support everybody who's down here um taking photos and, and documenting all this stuff for us. We, there's a ton of both new and, you know, longtime photographers that are down there. And, uh, you know, on top of all that, if you guys are down there and you are taking photos and you see something that you're not sure what it is, don't be afraid to DM uh, or tag CSI Starbase when you post those pictures, because we will make it our mission to uh, figure out what it is and uh, explain that for you. So, yeah, uh, you know, my DMs open for that, for photos of starbase and uh you know anybody who wants to participate in team space hit me up for that stuff as well um yeah you know i, I try i try and answer all all, all the dms because i know that a lot of people are really excited about this stuff so uh you know i think that that the rest of us like to do that stuff as well but uh just i guess it goes without saying just try and be respectful when you guys hop in people's dms and uh just realize that we are here for space and uh nothing else so yeah all right well with that said main engine cutoff stage separation confirmed love you bye